He was born to be the strongest of scions, surpassing and dominating everyone around him. This was supposed to be his path. But in the end, he became a stepping stone for Goku. Until an otherworldly soul takes over Broly's body and changes his future path. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Does your boy, Omni-sensei, welcome to What If I Was Reborn As Broly? The Scion of Legend. Part 2. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Afterward, Broly was announced the champion of the tournament. Afterward, the ranks were announced for the top 10, as they had been fighting for it in the breaks between the rounds. 10. A's the Scion with 5 credit points. 9. Biko the Hera with 10 CP8. Yanari the Harpy with 15 CP7. Noid the Hera with 20 CP6. Taro the Scion with 25 CP5. Blitz, the Wolfman with 45 CP4. Atrog, the Troll with 55 CP3. Aaliyah, the Scion with 75 CP2. Zinjo, the Myrmidon with 100 CP1. Broly, the Scion with 150 CP. After the tournament, those 10 would be disciples under the City Lord. It was also announced that every two years would be another tournament for another chance. But this wouldn't affect the already chosen top 10. The win against Zinjo was naturally seen by Kana, who was awakened by the loud noise and the rumbling because of the last fight. She resented that Broly won the tournament, as she thought he wasn't worthy of the title of the strongest prodigy of her generation. He was only ahead of her now, with time she would surly surpass him. Aaliyah was there when she awoke and tried to calm and comfort Kana, but with her red eyes it looked like she tried more to console herself than Kana. She had trained her whole life, after all, while being praised as the best. Because of the position of her father Daz and the fact that she wants to become their race leader, she was okay with Broly defeating her, but against Zinjo, she felt that she had dishonored her race. If she wanted to become the leader of the Scions, she had to be stronger. So, she renewed her conviction to work even harder. Although Ace got less CP, he was satisfied in becoming a disciple and barely at that. Taro obviously expected more and by being defeated by the champion, he took his loss to motivate him even more. Three days later, the Scion group was already packed and ready to move to the City Lord's place, beginning their training. On the way towards the City Lord's palace, the Scion group coincidentally met Zinjo on the way. Zinjo turned to them and looked at Broly. Broly, I wanted to apologize about what happened in the tournament. After ZYRD woke up, he told me that he provoked you for being different from the other Scions, so he kind of had it coming. ZYRD wouldn't have made it to the top 10 anyway. Broly stared at him for a second before responding. No worries. Well, there is still the conflict between our races, so we would have clashed even if he hadn't deliberately provoked me. Hmm? You care about that? Eh? You don't. Broly becoming puzzled as he remembered ZYRD being rather hostile towards him since the start. Broly thought it had something to do with the conflict between them, even though he himself didn't know about the conflict itself. Well, it's only about the privileges of the fruit of life and the land you got. Actually, only the higher-ups are upset about that, most of us don't really care. Uh, yeah. ZYRD was just really nervous and tried to hide it by being over-aggressive. Wait, so, I crushed him because he was a nervous train wreck? Oh god, no wonder he vomited all over the place. Don't worry, it was his own fault after all. Although many of us were infuriated by the way you handled him, but ZYRD took full fault for it and calmed the rest down. I think it is the best if we just have a fresh start, the two of us at least. Forget about the tournament and start anew? Sure, why not? Broly answered as he grasped Zinjo's outstretched hand. He was feeling slightly guilty how he humiliated ZYRD, so it would be best just to accept this proposal of peace. 
The ten were gathered on an open court, standing in front of the city lord, waiting for him to speak. Now you have proven yourself to be the strongest of your race and among the other races. You should be proud to achieve your level of strength at your tender age. Of course, this is not the limit of your capabilities. As my disciples and the future pillars of this planet, it is my duty to train you within the best of my ability. But, I'm no saint. You will have to work for the technique I have arduously created throughout my life. Most of those techniques, however, are manuals that I found when I was out in space-seeking adventures. That is where the credit points take in their purpose. In the library to your left will be those techniques, where you can exchange them if you have enough CP. On your right are the training rooms, where I will be holding general classes every morning for four hours. You can also always ask me about problems you might have. It is not restricted by the classes. Behind me are your rooms and the canteen. We will start tomorrow. You can have a look around and settle in today. As he said that, they all went around to take a look. First, they claimed their rooms. They were all 80 square meters big, with one room for their bed and another for the toilet. Apparently, they also had an open-air hot spring bath they shared. The training rooms were more than enough for everyone to claim one, and it seemed like that was indeed the intention, as all the keys were open for one to take. It appeared like the rooms were made of cat chin, one of the strongest metals in the universe, as it was entirely black. Well, this was what Broly concluded as he punched the walls and nearly breaking his hand in the process. After settling their stuff, they went to the library. They were greeted with hundreds of books. Astonishing considering that this was the City Lord's personal collection. It seemed that the City Lord was a collector. They started to browse through the books and only saw a summary of the technique and the amount of CP they would need to exchange of it. They were all divided into ranks from F to A, with F being the lowest and A being the highest. There were also different categories for different applications like movement dash, attack dash, defense skills. While they were looking through the books, they realized that many of the lower rank books described how to send out key beams. But why would there be so many books to describe the same thing over again? For a few hours, they looked through the books until most had already their eyes on a few techniques they wanted to learn. They were eager to exchange for them. But the librarian, Ahara, told them to at least wait for a few months, so they wouldn't hastily waste their CP. Broly also had a few books he was interested in. Key attacks that he saw in the series back in his past life, like the Spirit Sword, a blade-shaped energy wave technique used by Vegito, or the rapid movement skill to increase the speed for dodging or to create afterimages. If Broly could he wanted to learn everything, but as he saw the amount of CP needed, he quickly lost hope. But of course he would heed the advice of the librarian and see what the city lord would teach. The next day the city lord gave his first lesson, and it flabbergasted all of them except for a trog and Broly. The lesson was about the pathways of the so-called meridians, who run through their whole body, transporting the key where they wanted it to be. It was so surprising for them because they didn't know those paths existed. It just came natural to them. On second thought, there had to be some way to guide your energy through your body. After thinking that way, they quickly recovered from their initial shock. But for a trog it was no surprise, as a troll, which are not genetically gifted for key usage, trained and used his unusual intelligence to find those pathways and control his key. Broly, on the other hand, was somewhat aware of meridians through his past life experience. He remembered reading novels about those kinds of cultivators. They learned that using key for many races is a difficult thing, having to train arduously to be able to use it throughout the body. Hence most aren't even aware of them and are using cannons to fight. The city lord went on with how to meditate to increase their key and gain a feel for the meridians. It wasn't long before the lesson was over, and the kids were in deep thoughts. The city lord told them that they had to study their meridians on their own, since every person and race was a bit different. They would just need to circulate their key throughout the body and try to feel the pathways. They needed to develop an inner eye. By learning where exactly the meridians are, coupled with their natural affinity to it, they would gain a much higher degree of control. This would allow them to learn techniques even faster. The second point in this lesson was like a wake-up call for Broly. The city lord reminded them to train their body to be at least on par with the key they accumulated. By training their body, they could increase their key, since the body is essentially a vessel for it. If they only meditate, it would fill their body to the brim, 
and they would be stuck at that level for some time. Ki has an ability to strengthen your body to a degree and with time your body would be able to handle more Ki. But meditation coupled with physical training, the strengthening process would accelerate by many times. So, they were advised to balance their training, as it would be the fastest way to increase their overall strength. When Broly heard that, he decided to ask some question after the lesson to clarify some thoughts he had. After the others went to the training rooms, Broly went up to the city lord and asked, Can some people automatically accumulate ki without meditation? Oh, you have questions? Let me think. Mm, not that I have heard of. After most reach adulthood, they have a consistent level of ki if they don't use it. But using ki in battle, for example, strains the body. Over time, the body adapts to the usage and their ki reserves increases. That's how most increase their ki and strength. But just by using it, the ki in the body only grows slowly. Therefore, it is clever to meditate to increase your ki and then use it in battle or train your body to adapt to this new power. As I thought, that somewhat explains the Zenkai boost. As it was said in the series, the body will imprint on the injuries. After having survived a lethal wound, the body strengthens to the point it could receive the same attack which caused the wound. Therefore, automatically increasing the upper limit of ki they can store, and the senzu bean just filled Goku and the rest up with energy. What happens if the ki constantly increases to the point it would overflow? Overflow? Before overflowing, it would probably go rampage in the body trying to reach every part of your body. It would mess with your head until it destroys all your organs. Ki has strengthening properties but too much would just destroy the cells as they wouldn't be able to hold the energy. Essentially bursting out of the cells until it would overflow to the surroundings. You would need to quickly use up the excessive energy, which would defuse the problem for a moment. But to solve it, you would still have to excessively train your body to offset the imbalance. F asterisk CK me. That's why Broly in the series was such a maniac. Having his key suppressed probably messed with his brain, as his key still grew but couldn't release it unless Paragus let him. Are there any techniques for body strengthening? Since the questions pointed to the same thing, it dawned to the city lord why Broly asked him all those questions. A three-year-old winning a tournament against other races, most of them five years older than him, it should be obvious that his body was unique. Broly you probably realized after I told you how dangerous that kind of body type is. We need to do something the earlier the better. I have a feeling that only strengthening your body wouldn't be enough. Come here for a second. I will envelop you with my key and try to sense your key as best as I can. I have to get a better understanding of your key before I can help you. Broly knew he wouldn't be able to solve this easily on his own. The city lord was the best in controlling key. With his experience, he would be able to help Broly understand his situation better, maybe even solve his predicament. All right, I will be in your care. The city lord enveloped Broly with his bluish aura. All right, stop suppressing your power. After Broly stopped his suppression, the city lord could clearly feel Broly's key. Now power up to your fullest. Broly's key instantly flared up, pushing the key of the city lord outward. For 10 minutes, the city lord asked Broly to control his key in different ways. The more the city lord observed, the worse his face became. All right, that's enough. So, how is it? It's bad. Your key is chaotic and violent. It not only increases rapidly, but the very nature of your key is problematic. Key is part of oneself, but yours strangely rebels against your control. That's why all new key is trying to destroy your body before you can rein it in. As I suspected, even if you were able to constantly strengthen your body to match your key, the key would always struggle against you. So first you have to be able to make it truly your own. Then we can fix your constant increase problem. But why would it rebel against me? Again with my key. But I thought I already had it under control when I fused the fragments in me. Seems like I somehow messed up. But how? I don't know, but that's exactly what you need to find out to make it your own. You have to trace it back until you find the problem. Try to circulate your key into the depths where you don't have any control. You should be able to find the source of it. As the city lord said, Broly sat cross-legged onto the ground and circulate his key throughout his body until he met resistance. It was in the center of his body where he fused the fragments. 
he could only vaguely perceive what his center was. It shined in a green light and sent out energy which attacked the cells in his body. The ones who survived the attack started shining from the energy in a green hue. He could tell that those were undergoing a mutation. They were giving off a tremendous amount of power as they evolved. Those were his S-cells. No wonder other scions wouldn't be able to achieve this form, since the cells needed were completely different. If my key wasn't so violent, there would be probably much more cells brimming with energy, mutating into S-cells. Now it also makes sense why Scions with a gentle spirit had more S-cells. Their key wouldn't be so violent and the cells could take in the energy easier, and the reason stronger Scions had more was that their whole body was brimming with key. With a higher amount of key a mutation would be inevitable. Explains why I still aren't a Super Scion. Well, at least I can fix it now. Broly tried to send more into it, but it was like he threw an egg against a brick wall. All of his key was annihilated the moment it came into contact with the center. Two days later, he still tried to pry deeper into his center, but he couldn't make any progress no matter what method he used. He was currently sitting cross-legged in one of the trainings room with 200G. Surprisingly, it possessed a gravity chamber which went up to 1000G if you base the measurements on the gravity of Earth. Anyhow, he was contemplating about how to get into the center and rein it in. If he succeeded, he wouldn't have to worry about the destructive nature of his key. He could then concentrate on training his body to prevent the key to overflow and work on becoming a super scion. As he was thinking, he thought about ways to get into the source. Suddenly it hit him, the very first lesson from the city lord was about increasing your key by meditation. Since Broly never needed to increase his key manually, he dismissed this method, but it was simple, actually. He didn't have to move his key into the source but could just generate his own key inside the source. With that in mind, he went on to increase his key via meditation and tried to use his inner eye to perceive what the problem is. Although he wasn't very proficient with his inner eye, he could vaguely make some things out. He perceived three different parts in his center. One part was the constantly growing green energy, which was trashing around as it flew out of the center. Another part was a black pearl, completely unfazed by the violent green energy. It wasn't giving off any kind of aura, but it was still undoubtedly there, and Broly was somehow aware of it. And lastly his energy as it increased at a moderate pace but the moment it made contact with the green energy. It seemed to be devoured by it until he lost the connection. Oh. It seemed I didn't do a good job fusing the fragments after my birth. Rather than fusing, I only encased them into my center. Apparently, the original soul still has a remnant inside. The black pearl is probably something from the darkness and I myself have basically no control of this place. Undoubtedly, the original soul and mine tried to fight over control. In the end, I managed to imprison the remnant and basically gave it control over the inner workings of my key. Great. It originates from the remnant, making it foreign key. No wonder it starts to destroy my cells. Fortunately, it doesn't have control outside of it, I can rein the key slowly in. The only reason why my cells can even absorb them is likely due to the toughness of a scion. And what about the pearl? Art. I can't tell. I will have to deal with my current problems first. As it doesn't do anything it is not important right now, I have to figure out how to take over control. Maybe. Maybe I will just do the same that the Remnant did and devour him. The next few weeks, Broly went on with the same routine. He woke up attended the lessons, as there may be other useful knowledge to help him. After that, he spent the whole time in the gravity chamber in meditation. Only ever came out to eat for dinner. As a surprise for Broly, he saw Kana and Dremo, the Draco in class as well. It seemed that the City Lord had taken liberty to take two more disciples as he would have taken in Biko and Noid from his own race anyway. He thought it would be good to take in two more good seedlings. Kana of course fell into that category, as her power level jumped up for a short moment in one of her fights, garnering the city lord's interest. Broly was getting more and more pissed at Kana. It only inflated Kana's ego, since the city lord had taken her in regardless of the result of the tournament. It only fed the idea that she was something special. Furthermore, it didn't help her ego that she was getting stronger through the teachings as well. The others still had a good relationship with her, as they thought she was joking around like Broly or Taro. 
Broly knew that that wasn't the case, but right now he had more important problems than a brat. One month later, Broly was sitting cross-legged in the training's chamber under the pressure of 300G. He was sweating all over his body, but not because of the gravity, but by the fight he currently had. A fight over control. The energy was violent and chaotic, but it didn't specifically aim for him so he could, to a certain extent, expand his influence in the center. He couldn't devour the key as it was just too domineering and would immediately overwhelm him. So instead of brute force his way, he moved his key circularly until it behaved like a tornado, ripping tiny pieces of the energy and gained control over it. But as soon as a bigger ray of energy entered the tornado, it completely dispersed and took over the energy. It seemed he had the right technique to deal with the remnant, but Broly's generated key was too weak. After a week since he started to use that method, he concentrated his energy, making it much denser to the point it could somewhat compete against the other key. But this process was extremely slow, he had to make his key denser and watch out that he doesn't expand too quickly. After three weeks he was now on par with the remnant's key and slowly but surely, he would be able to have full control over his key. Of course, it wouldn't mean that he could perfectly manipulate and guide his key but that it wouldn't actively destroy his body. After reaching this point, his own key began to be able to replenish energy automatically. It appeared that with time, this ability would automatically accelerate to the point that it would reach the same level as the remnants. Coupled with meditation, his energy would only skyrocket. With that being said, he was able to place his focus on other things, it was tiring to do the same thing for the last month. He still had to train his body and needed some battle experience, he also figured he could earn some CP in the process. The city lord offered other methods to gain CP in a form of missions. One could pair up in a group or do it on your own. Missions consisted in extermination dash, capture and protection missions. As it seemed that the CE only came after intelligent beings and would let normal wildlife live, someone had to deal with them in order to make it safer for patrols and the scattered villages. Most people would still live in the villages as the city couldn't accommodate all of them and most villagers couldn't afford to stay there permanently. Since the CE only attacked every three years, only then would they seek protection in the city. There were some villages that would just stay and fight the CE, as the stronger ones were more attracted to the greater amount of life force. So, the more populated regions faced an increased amount of attacks. No one knows the reason why they don't attack wildlife, as it was known that their aim was life force, since they were already bombarded with requests for help. The city lord decided that it would be the perfect training method for the young prodigies. As Broly went to the mission board, he was greeted with the other scions. They long formed a team with Taro, Aze, and Aaliyah. It seemed after the month time, Aaliyah and Kana have distanced themselves a bit. Aaliyah explained to Broly that it was because Kana wasn't interested in anything other than the training rooms. But Aaliyah already had her goals and techniques in mind, which was why she needed more CP. But it was not to learn the technique, but to learn from them. After a few lessons, the city lord emphasized that one should just use them for references. This was especially true as many techniques were from different races, meaning that their meridians would also more or less differentiate. They were advised to grasp the concept and not how to circulate your energy to create the effect. Even if one learned the same technique had the same strength and amount of key, the one who grasped the technique and made it his own would undoubtedly win over someone who didn't. After they talked for a while, the Scions were surprised that Broly wanted to join them for a mission, as he had only been seen training in the gravity chamber. They were delighted to be able to guide him in something and immediately agreed. They searched for a fitting first mission. In the end, they decided on a mission with giant bats involved. After they accepted the mission, they were given the information on location and the nearest village. The missions weren't divided in difficulties, only after deciding on the mission would be more information revealed other than the type of monster and their numbers. If it was on the easier or harder side was up to luck. Of course, the missions were never too difficult and were generally on the same level. It was made this way so they wouldn't shy away to go into certain types of environment or type of mission like capture or protect missions. The Scions were clearly more of a fan of extermination missions. With other mission types, the races could get out of their comfort zones and became more adaptable to different scenarios. After sorting out the information, they realized that it was about six hours away, 
considering how fast they were able to travel, it once again amazed Broly how vast this planet was. After stocking up their supplies, they started flying towards the village just before their destination. After they arrived, they landed in the village. The group showed their badge, which was a type of proof that they belonged to the city, Elpis. They welcomed them wholeheartedly, as they were already waiting for a group of the city to help them. They were astonished to see that all of them were just teens but dismissed it as the city people were generally speaking more powerful than they were. If they knew that those kids in front of them weren't even 10 years old, they would probably be more than just astonished. They were invited for dinner by the chief of the village and were offered a place to stay the night. The group decided to go to the cave where the bats were living in the next morning. In the middle of the night, as the moonlight lightens up the surrounding, a shrill sound rang out in the village. Awoken by the noise, Aes, Taro, and Aaliyah, already more experienced by this kind of events, headed out, only to see two giant bats, both two meters in height, intending to abduct the livestock. Before the group could dash off into the fight, a door blasted open from where they just came from. Now you have done it. No one interrupts my sleep. Broly came walking out, two key spheres in his hand. As soon as he finished his sentence, he threw his spheres right at them. Boom! Boom! With a huge explosion, the giant bats were reduced to ashes. The villagers were shocked at the display. They looked at the young boy who was already walking back inside with a yawn on his face. It was dark. No sunshine reached the depths of this cave. On the way deeper, they encountered countless of these bats, only to be killed by the group. It seemed to be an easy mission as the beasts were quite weak on their own, but they had numbers on their side. There were countless of these giant bloodsuckers. If one of the Scions were to be on his own it would have been tough but now in a group of four, they were bulldozing through the cave in the search of the nest of these bats. They were instinctively attracted towards special blood crystals, which they used to enhance their body. The group was ordered to find this crystal and eliminate all the bats inside. They were to bring back the crystals as proof of their success. Two hours in, they were seeing different bats with four wings on their backs. They remembered Broly of the Pokemon Crobat, but it was still no match for them. Another hour passed, and they finally made it to a big hall deep underground. On the walls were some blood crystals scattered around, but strangely they didn't see a single bat inside. All they could find was a few bones, unknown from what it stemmed from, and a blood trace towards the opposite exit. We should follow the blood trail, maybe they were killed off by a stronger beast. Aaliyah said in quite a voice as they observed the surroundings inside. Broly found it funny that she was completely calm during the whole ordeal, but Taro, the self-proclaimed strongest, was quite nervous from the get-go. He seemed to get anxious underground. He was easily started by anything that moved. Quite amusing to see a scion, the warrior race, Shout out because of a little rat. I, I think we SH should just pick up a blood crystal and dash and leave? The village has problems with the bats. That's why they asked for assistance. The bats were probably chased out because of whatever is deeper inside. We have to kill it so it will be safer for them. We can't leave just because we fulfilled a mission's condition. We have to be through and through with this or there will be bad consequences. Aaliyah rebuked as she was more out to help the villagers than complete the mission uncommon for normal science, but Broly figured that the new generation would handle their business quite different in the future. Let's first follow the blood trails, suppress your key. We will first check out what we deal with and then decide our future moves. So, for now be quiet. Aze was quite solemn, still being vigilantly about the surroundings as he moved towards the blood trails. Affected by the mood, Aaliyah and Taro stopped arguing and put on a more serious face. They followed Aes who was leading them to through the exit. For half an hour, they moved through the five-meter high tunnels. After some time, they started to hear something snoring, moving closer to the end of the tunnel, which was shining in a red hue. The closer they got, the heavier the stench of blood was. They stepped through the exit. Their eyes adjusted to the light after more than three hours of darkness. Naturally, they still used their key sense, so they had a general idea what was inside. Lying on the ground in the center of the hall was a four-meter-tall giant humanoid, looking like the mythical creature, a minotaur. As if it was waiting for them, it jumped up, looking towards the group with bloodshot eyes. 
His mouth and large parts of his body were covered in blood, evidently from the countless corpses of the surrounding bats. Behind him was a river, it also gained a deep red color through the bodies. The group started spreading out, trying to surround it. Taro and Aze ran to the left side and Aaliyah to the right. Broly dashed towards the Minotaur straight ahead. The others shot key blasts towards the Minotaur from the sides, but it just tanked through it, only having Broly in his eyes. They both punched out, colliding with each other. The ground was crushed by the shockwave generated, while Broly was throwing back to the entrance. Before it could follow him up with anything, Aaliyah was already above it dropping on it with an axe kick, hitting it straight on the top of his head. She stomped hard on the head again, jumping away from the approaching hand. The Minotaur barely turned around as two key beams headed towards it from two different directions. The Minotaur blocked the beam with his two arms as it growled, clearly angry on the joined attack. Suddenly it was sent flying towards the river, but it didn't land in it but instead shot towards the 20 meter high ceiling, as Broly appeared under it, kicking it upwards. Broly but both of his arms upwards as he charged up his key in his hands. The Minotaur was embedded inside the ceiling. It struggled to get out, but as soon as he pulled out his head, it was struck with a fierce green beam, pushing it even deeper into the ceiling. Broly exhaled deeply, but he knew not to drop his guard. He believed the attack should be enough for this beast, but it was common to die when one dropped their guard. He waited for the possibility that it would crawl out. Taro already started boasting. The brighter and more spacious environment seemed to have improved his mood. Ha ha ha. Way too easy. Couldn't even resist. You idiot. Stop raising flags. Broly shouted at him. With a rumble, the Minotaur abruptly shot out of the hole to the ground. Ah, great. Let me guess, you are even stronger now. As if on cue, the Minotaur started to give off a tremendous amount of ki. A red flame-like aura surrounded it. Its muscle mass increased even further, and its horns began to grow. With a deep growl, it started to dash towards Broly, who watched it approach with a wry smile. With every step, the ground trembled and slightly gave in as it accelerated. A few meters away, it leaped up, then crashed towards Broly with a punch. Well, here goes nothing. Broly evaded the punch with a jump, but as soon as he was in the air, the Minotaur opened his mouth gathering key in front of it, before shooting it out. The beam was too fast to dodge. Broly could only cross his arms to block the attack. With the impact, Broly was sent flying towards the ceiling above the entrance they came from. He was already embedded deep into the ceiling, but the Minotaur still shot out his beam, determined to end Broly right then and there. But before he could do so, it was greeted with three different key blasts. Of course, they couldn't just let him do as he pleases. Taro and Aze rushed at the Minotaur, exchanging dozens of blows, as Aaliyah charged up her crushing sphere. Her speed in making the sphere substantially increased. The City Lord's lesson really paid off, as she could now charge her attack up more efficiently with an additional increase of strength. She threw her crushing sphere as soon as it reached its optimum state. Although her speed has increased tremendously, the boys were already beaten up at the time she sent it out. The Minotaur was just too strong and huge. It used its height difference to completely pummel them before they could even come close to its body. The Minotaur saw the sphere and instinctively sensed the danger from it, so he put all his effort in defending against it. He welcomed the sphere with his two arms, as it was slowly pushed towards the collapsed entrance. Just a few meters away, a figure came rushing out off the debris with a key sphere in his hand. Have a taste of this. Eraser cannon. Broly threw his sphere at the back of the Minotaur. Sandwiched between the spheres, it tried to struggle itself out of the way. But just before it succeeded, Taro and Aze sent a key beam from each side, completely surrounding the Minotaur. With a last howl, the Minotaur was reduced to ashes as the key erupted. The shockwave was no joke underground. It sent the four young scions crashing into the cave walls. The dust slowly settled as a voice sounded out. This time it is dead for sure, right? Taro asked with a small chuckle. You bastard. After I crawl out of this hole, I will beat you up. Broly swore at him. After two hours, they recovered most of their wounds and were mostly able to move around. 
They had healing capsules made of the fruit of might, but unlike the fruit itself, it didn't have the same instant regeneration. It only accelerated one's natural healing capabilities. As Broly stepped back into the hall, he saw the devastated cave resulting from their battle. The hall they were in was expanded by quite a bit, and the river flowed towards the center of the pit on the ground. Broly saw the others step out of their respected holes. Even after recovering for two hours, they still drew deep breaths. They were still exhausted to the extreme after the fierce fight they just had. The Minotaur they just fought had an incredible high tenacity. Without Broly, they would have likely died against that Minotaur. Although they thought themselves as quite experienced in missions, this made them realize that right now, even a random mission could end their lives if they weren't alert enough or overconfident in their abilities. Now, after the cave entrance collapsed, they had to find another way out. Since there were only two ways, one was the used to be entrance and the other was swimming upwards the river. Without other choices, they began to swim the river upstream. After an hour, they reached a small pond created by a 20-meter high waterfall. There was a small area to the side of the pond with a hole in a wall and what seemed to be the exit a few meters next to it. Hey guys, come here. Look what I have found. Taro shouted after he entered the hole in the wall. They flew towards him and as soon as they entered, a bright red light shone at them. It was a gigantic blood crystal, a three meters tall crystal. Besides that, there were scratches on the walls and other marks that pointed to the possibilities that the Minotaur used to live here. The place was giving off a heavy stench of blood as well. They underlined that thought, considering the previous living conditions with the bat's corpses. It was clearly the living place of the Minotaur. They wondered why it slept way down the river. Was it frightened away? Let's take it with us and let's go to the village. Stay another night there. Aaliyah said as she closed her nose with two fingers. Agreed. Sure. Aes carried the crystal on his back. As they moved out of the underground pond. With the exit not far from the Minotaur's lair. After they left. A black creature unnoticeably came out of the water and flew into the waterfall. Only an hour later. The group emerged at the side of a mountain. After orientating themselves with their map, they flew towards the village to spend another night there. Arriving at the chief's place, they first took a bath, before dropping into their beds. The others immediately fell asleep. Broly, however, used the time to meditate for a moment. He was inching closer to his full control. Even now, the amount of his S-cells tremendously increased over the past month. In the morning of the next day, they said their goodbyes to the chief before flying back towards Elpis in only four hours. After their battle against the Minotaur, they all received a Zenkai boost, giving them a leap in their strength. Arriving in Elpis, they headed straight towards the reception who received completed missions. It was not in the City Lord's Palace but at a public mission center, where it would usually hand over their missions as well. The crowd stared at the young group and the gigantic red crystal they carried with them. They began discussing the group in a hushed voice. Isn't that the champion? It is the first time seeing him out. Yeah, you are right. But more importantly, what is with this absurd blood crystal? I never heard of blood crystals. Bigger than half a meter. The receptionist accepted the complete mission, but only took a tiny part of the blood crystal. They were advised to bring it to the leader of the mission center, as he would handle the more extraordinary finds. The leader of the mission center gawked after he analyzed it. In a hurry, he left, saying he wasn't qualified to handle this. He reported this to the city lord. After a minute or two, the city lord arrived, appraising the blood crystal. Unbelievable! Master! The science called out. Although Broly first felt odd to call someone master, but over the month and the tens of consultation he had, it became a natural thing. In those consultation sessions, Broly quickly came to realize that the city lord was nearly obsessed with gaining knowledge, as he asked Broly about every detail of his process. Of course, Broly gained tremendously through those interactions, especially about micro-adjustments of key. Where did you find this? We were doing a mission near the Gaeldo village. Giant bats were attacking the village, and they requested the city to exterminate them. We found it deep inside a cave, where the bats nested. Aes answered for the group. Aes recounted the events from beginning to the end. 
I see. You guys really found a rarity. What is it, master? Taro nearly screamed out. Cough. It appears to be a mother blood crystal. Mother blood. Have you heard of the origin crystals? Seeing them shake their heads, he continued. Well, you are no natives after all. I also only learned it after I became the city lord. There is an ancient legend about three origin crystals. Origins blood crystal, origins spirit crystal, and the origins energy crystal. They were the three cornerstones of this planet and sky, maintaining order and letting the species on it flourish. After eons of prosperity and bliss, waves of blue bright light appeared in the sky. But before the light could reach the ground, the three origin crystals shone in their respected hue and the planet moved towards an unknown location. Supposedly, it is where we currently are. Through moving the planet away, the crystals lost their luster and shattered into countless fragments. Some of these fragments contained a fraction of the might of the origin crystal they stemmed from. Those fragments were called mother crystals. With it, even weaker races could gain tremendous power and sometimes give birth to abilities. Hence the name. The ability usually corresponds to which crystals one consumed. One can consume the crystals? Taro's eyes were practically shining at this point. Of course, the others were equally excitement, if what was said is true. Yes, it is commonly known that one cannot consume crystals, but this is only accurate for crystals that don't hold any power in them. You guys should consume this mother crystal as soon as possible, after the word gets out that the race, which joined just recently, obtained this kind of treasure, it will cause chaos. Considering the size, it should be more than enough for the four of you. Broly saw that the city lord was quite eager to see them use it, but he himself seemed to have no desire for it himself. If it was really a miraculous item, as he said, why wouldn't he want it? Master, don't you want to have it? The city lord looked at Broly while raising an eyebrow before chuckling. Indeed, but don't worry, I will only take a tiny amount, for study's purposes. It is indeed a great item to boost one's power, but it is also said that the younger the consumer is, the more effective it is. I believe it has something to do with a young body being easier influenced than older ones. Besides, it was you who lucked upon it, some things are just meant to be. The city lord then described to them how to absorb the power inside, accordingly to how it was passed on. After a quick consultation with Daz and the other leaders, they decided to let the group of four and Kana absorb as much as they could before giving what would be left to the city lord to preserve it. Although Broly disliked Kana, he agreed in the end, as the race would be better off if they had more strong warriors and Kana was still a talented child in the end. Broly was determined to give her a good beating if her attitude worsened. On the next day, in a training's room, all five of them were standing in front of the giant crystal. They were cutting their palms open and moved their key into the blood before pressing their palms onto the crystal. Guiding the power inside into their palm while circulating their key in an unusual manner. They felt the crystal slightly tremble as warmth flowed inside their body through their palms. After a few minutes, one by one was letting go and sat down to break down the power inside their body. Broly only let go after half an hour, he was the last one to let go. He sat down, trying to absorb the power. As he was circulating the power, he realized that his cells were trembling in excitement. Every cell was slowly filled to the brim. Broly watched on with his inner eye as the cells were radiating with power. But this wasn't the extent of the power of the Origin's blood. His muscles, skin, and bones became denser and tougher. He could feel how his body was strengthening at a visible pace. Even his organs were getting stronger by the minute. This was how he felt when he consumed the fruit of might, just that this far exceeded the intensity of the fruit. He still could get numerous of fruits, but he sensed that the fruits were forcefully increasing one's life force. It would be harmful to take too many of them. That was also one of the reasons the city lord used special capsules made out of the fruits, instead of directly eating it for the tournament. Comparing it to the crystal was like comparing earth and heaven. Although the effects were far greater than the fruit, it wasn't even close as forceful as the fruit. Rather, it complemented the body. As time passed, Broly felt as if a burden was lifted off his shoulder. His body was feeling particular relaxed, as if years of tension was finally dissipating. He realized that his body was way more under stress than he previously thought. 
As this feeling was omnipresent since birth, he attributed it towards the scion body before getting used to it. But now he knew it was caused by the imbalance of his body and ki. He was extremely happy seeing this. Instead of increasing the amount of life force, this crystal used the energy to elevate the cells themselves to a higher level. It was a qualitative change, giving him much more leeway in the future with his increasing ki. Similar to S cells, they gave off an intimidating pressure, but it was a soothing kind filled with vitality and not the dominating pressure the S cells emitted. After an hour, most of the power was deeply ingrained in Broly's cells, until he felt a strange feeling built up inside him. This feeling became more and more prominent. It started in Broly's center before spreading into all his cells, organs, blood, skin and bones. He was aware of everything that happened inside his body. This, this is, an idea flashed in his mind. He immediately concentrated on his center, perceiving the changes inside. And there it was. Life force. Pure life force generating in the center in abundance, before spreading throughout his body. A new source. A source of life force supplying Broly with pure energy. It is even a bit higher than the amount of key I generate. That means, this completely nullifies my problems. With the surplus, I even should be able to accelerate my regeneration. Well, that would only be possible if I can guide the energy. Even if I can't, it will make me live low. Life force is different from Ki. Although every living being has it, it is not something one can easily control. Although Goku was able to create a Jankadama through life force, it was through the willingness of sentient beings to share their energy, enabling Goku to gather their energy with a technique. A technique created by a deity, the North Kai only able to be used by pure-hearted people. As Broly sensed something, he opened his eyes and looked at his palm, before he raised it to his mouth and bit down between his finger and thumb. Blood dripped down his chin, while he looked at his wound. He tried to grasp the life force and guide it to his wound. His eyes widened as he felt the life force obediently flow according to his will, healing his wound. Although it wasn't as exaggerated as a Namekian's ability to regrow a limp or booze near a mortal body. But it wasn't slow by any means. Broly's regenerative abilities nearly tripled with the support of life force. If he accumulates his life force, this amount would even increase. Not only did this crystal give me incredible strength, making my body evolve to a whole new level and solved my predicament, but it also blessed me with a life-saving technique. Ha 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 ha. Broly laughed out with a near maniacal laugh, startling the others. The others seemed to have already finished absorbing this miraculous power. As they were reveling their increase in power, they were awoken by Broly's laugh. They looked at him, who had his head down looking at his palm. After a while, his laugh ceased before he looked at them with a smile on his face. Before he could say anything, Aze was falling to his knees, sweating profusely, followed with Kana who stumbled backwards to the ground with a panic-stricken face. Only Taro and Aaliyah were left standing with their legs shaking. It was the same for all scions in this room. They knew who they looked at, but they couldn't help but feel fear strike their hearts as they looked into his now yellow eyes. It was a fear born from their most primitive instinct. They couldn't help it. The weaker ones already collapsed with only the stronger ones being able to stand. This only lasted for a second before Broly's eyes reverted to his normal black eyes, but it felt like hours for the four young scions. Broly was shocked as well, but only partly because of their reaction. At the moment he looked up, his life force seemed to flare up as he looked at the white glistering lights flashing inside the bodies of the other people. He could see their life force, but it didn't stop there. He realized by concentrating he could not only see it, but also sense his surroundings. To be precise, he could sense every living being in his near periphery. For a second, a whole new perspective seemed to open up for him. A new side of the universe which was previously in the dark was now shining like a beacon right at him. Awoken by the panting in front of him, he regained his focus. Are you alright? He asked the heavily breathing scions on the ground. Damn! What the hell was that? Taro started cursing as he fell on his butt, still looking at Broly. I I don't know. Broly, did you gain an ability? The city lord asked. He was confused by what happened 
as he couldn't sense anything for them to be so frightened. Ah, yes, I did. Well, if you didn't, I don't think anybody could. Aaliyah threw in after she regained her bearings. Hmm? Why? You didn't notice? You sucked the crystal completely dry. Broly's eyes widened as he heard that. He looked at where the crystal was previously at, only to find a heap of dust. Before they started absorbing the energy, the city lord made an accurate analysis of how many people could absorb from it. The outcome was around 12 people, which meant that Broly took in 8 people's worth of power. Cough. I think you guys should first get some rest. Have your body adapt to the changes before starting to train again. Broly, I hope you could share some information about your ability later. Cough. Now go rest. Broly didn't miss the glint in the city lord's eyes, showing his obsessive side again after he discovered something new. Broly felt like the city lord was looking at him like a mystery box, not able to wait to discover new things. Yes, master, the kids shouted before heading out. Broly saw Kana at the door looking at him before heading out. Broly exchanged some words with Aaliyah, Taro and Aze inquiring if they gained anything from the crystal. Unexpectedly, Taro seemed to have gained an ability. He said that he didn't know what it is exactly, but he knew that it would give him tremendous power. Aaliyah and Aze got an immense increase in strength, but they couldn't help but be a bit dejected about not gaining a special ability. A few days later, Broly was standing inside the City Lord's office. So what is my ability? I thought one would only gain one ability. After what you have recounted, it is clear that you gained the ability to generate life force. But the other abilities aren't abilities that you got, but side effects. Side effects. Being able to generate life force gives you an extremely high affinity to life force, maybe even the highest possible. With that, you didn't even need to learn how to manipulate it, it just came natural to you now. You should be able to discover other uses of life force in the future. Of course, that is only speculation on my side. But why were the others so frightened? They only said that they felt fear, but couldn't describe why. I thought it had to do with my life force, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It has been a year since they came back from Elpis. In the last ten years, Violet and her parents would make week-long travel towards the city, when the time for the CE to attack comes. Violet was already used to this kind of event, but rather than feeling afraid of the attacks, she looked forward to visiting Elpis again. Besides, her parents showered her with love, making their escape feel like a holiday trip. The city helped her reduce her initial anxiousness as well. The city is always lively and there were many different species she would never encounter in the village. It was a thrilling experience whenever she visited, seeing all the flying cars, screens and the other high-end technology. Her eyes were sparkling every time she visited, but what awed her the most were the people soaring the skies, the strong individuals who were protecting them when they sought shelter. She admired them from afar, as they patrolled the city walls in their uniform. Today she turned 16, all her friends and family gathered together and celebrated with a feast and lots of gifts. It was a very small village with barely a few hundred people in it, which resulted in almost everyone knowing each other. In the evening, she went out with her friends into the nearby woods to have a small party. She wore a short dress. The top part was in a bright red, which crumbled into the white bottom part. It complemented her light bluish skin and dark violet hair, giving her a lively feel. Although she was young, she looked like a young woman. Her long legs and her already developed assets were attracting the boys' gazes. Needless to say that she was popular among the male villagers. She would be lying if she said that she didn't enjoy the attention. But since she was a child, she knew what she wanted. To work and live in her race's headquarter in the city. But this was a distant dream. Only the strongest or smartest were allowed to live within the walls of the city. This was a restriction made from the city to only have people able to contribute to society. She knew that she wasn't smart enough to get in, so she trained almost every day after hearing that one of her races made it in and accomplished astonishing feats. Her race, Lycan, reached adulthood early on at the age of 16 and wouldn't change in appearance until they were 500 years old. They lived long lives up to a thousand years. They were admired for their beauty and envied by their long lifespan, 
but they didn't excel in other areas. Weren't it for their long lifespan and accumulated knowledge, they probably wouldn't even be able to have a stand inside the city, the place Violet worked to get in. Today she was as determined as ever. She wanted to have a little party before applying for a job in the city, now that she officially became an adult. Although her parents were reluctant to send her to the city, but since she was already considered an adult, they supported her in the end. But tonight, it was time to relax and enjoy the night. After a few hours, the party came to an end, most going back home. Only a friend who courted her in the past was left with her. They went to the village before separating towards their home and going to sleep. This was what was supposed to happen. This should have been a normal day, like any other. Her mind was blank as she stood a few hundred meters away from her village. She saw her village burn with an occasional CE roaring out. We have to leave, the friend of her screamed, shaking her to try to bring her out of the daze. Suddenly a CE showed up from the village, looking at them, apparently attracted by the scream. It started going into a full sprint towards them. Her friend screamed out in panic before running away, leaving Violet behind. This attracted the monster even further, ignoring the frozen Violet, heading straight at her friend. Pulling herself out of the daze, she headed straight at the village. Mom! Dad! She screamed as she ran through the empty streets, until a familiar figure caught her attention. Her father with only one arm was staring at her before sprinting at her. She broke into tears, seeing her father still alive. She wanted to hug him, but he just grabbed her arm with his remaining arm before fleeing towards the shadow of a building. Seeing his pain-filled face, she realized something. Dad? W.H. Where is mom? He gritted his teeth before tears flowed down his cheek. His silence confirmed her fear. She couldn't help breaking out in tears while hugging his father. Her father wiped away the tears on her crying face as he looked at her before whispering, P.S.H.H.H. Sweetie, it is all right. Sweetie, look at me. I know it is hard, but you have to listen to me. You have to run to Elpis. Tell them what happened. You have to warn them. You have to tell them that the CE is already attacking. W.Y. me. Why you are co-ming with me. You can tell them. He looked at her with a saddened smile. It is a week from here. I have already lost too much blood. You have to be strong. You hear me? Stay strong. I am glad that I could see you one last time. He gave her a kiss on the forehead, hugging her tight. Now go. Remember head east. Don't stop. Don't look back. He hurried her. In the background, he could hear them approach. I, you, we can still make it. I, I'm strong. I can dash before she could continue. A black giant shadow appeared near them on the street. No. Listen to your old pa one last time. Okay. Everything will be all right. I love you. He then pushed her deeper into the shadows before running out on the street. Hey, you ugly beast. Come and get me if you can. Screamed at him before running in the opposite direction. The CE provoked, ran after him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Violet silently cried as she ran out of the village. Without stopping, without looking back, she ran. For days until she collapsed to the ground near a river out of exhaustion. Mom. Dad. She mumbled before falling asleep. A week later Aaliyah, A's, Taro and Broly went for another mission. This time it was a simple investigation mission to the west. There were some reports about disappearing people, usually they were stronger individual with plenty of experience. After their increase they wanted to adapt to their power, but unfortunately it turned out to be investigation, maybe the city lord arranged that way so they would take a longer rest. Although they were unsatisfied with the type of mission they got, they still carried on. They went to the village that made the last report and have them tell about the missing person's routine. They followed the instructions from the villagers and soon found a few markings of scratches. Varying in sizes and depths, the footprints were also all different. This didn't tell Broly anything, but the others were more familiar with those hints. Maybe it is the CE? Taro said aloud, as they flew further west and with it, the markings became more obvious. Don't be ridiculous. They only appear on full moon. It is still two years until that. There is no way they would show up now. He's immediately retorted. 
What else could it be? That number of varying creatures of different shapes in a singular spot, only the stronger ones disappeared, meaning only those with stronger life force, which should be their scouts to test the waters before they go on a full-on assault. Obviously points at the sea, A's. You said they only appear in full moon, Broly inquired. HM? Yes, they do. Pretty much every time they start their attack, it is on a full moon. Since we only have a full moon every three years, they only attack then, and with the moon they retract their forces. Wait, has that something to do with your tails being removed? Tails? I know about that. Aaliyah suddenly chimed in, seemingly eager to show off her knowledge. My father told me that we have to cut off our tails before the full moon comes out. It takes some time before they regrow, so every few years we have to cut it off. Apparently, the sea completely lose it when they see one with a tail. They will prioritize you and will not cease until one is dead. In addition, it is said that we can transform into giant apes. Most scions are not able to remain conscious in that state, making one an even easier target, so the higher-up decided to cut it off. They prioritize those with tails? Or are they prioritizing scions? M. It seems they prioritize scions. Since Dracos still keep their tails. Weird. Even after I am able to sense life force, it doesn't appear that scions contain different life force than others. The tail only seem to have a greater amount of life force, but that should be it. So, what have tails to do with them being able to sense scions? If they can sense life force, wouldn't they recognize scions even if they cut off their tails? Unless a scion loses something with the tail, and they don't actually sense the life force in the tail but something else? Hmm. As they were flying over a small river, Broly discovered what appears to be a bloody figure. Guys, I think I discovered something. Without waiting, he flew down, landing a few tens of meters away from the figure. He scanned the area, trying to sense any other life force or key signature in the vicinity, indicating an ambush. After he didn't sense anybody, he directed his focus on the figure. He realized that the life force was a bit on the low side. He quickly approached what appears to be a young woman. Furthermore, he stabilized her before feeding her a healing capsule. By then, the others were already landing near him. After seeing him heal her, they went out to secure the area. It would take a while for her to recover. It wouldn't be wise to move her now and risk worsening her injuries. Although, Broly realized that her dress was not drenched in blood, but just that this was the color of it. He still didn't want to risk anything, so they waited for her to wake up. After an hour and two capsules, she finally woke up. Her eyes felt heavy as she tried to open them. After struggling for a minute, she finally could see a stranger who was crouching next to her. After the initial shock, she saw the badge at his belt indicating that he was from Elpis. She looked down at her body, seeing the dirted and ragged dress that she wore. She remembered what happened. She remembered her village burn. She remembered her father sacrificing himself for her. She broke out in tears as she threw herself at the stranger, crying in his arms. Seeing the woman cry in his arm, he knew that she had to be through much to accumulate so much pain that she would throw herself at a stranger. She was obviously traumatized by the events. Can you tell me what happened? He tried to ask in the gentlest voice he could manage. Say, in between her sobbing and mumbling, he recognized the word C.E. Without waiting, he picked her up princess style, before commanding the others. We are going back. Now. Although he wasn't the official leader, but he was still the strongest, and they could read the seriousness in his voice, so without hesitation they followed his orders. It didn't take long until the woman cried herself to sleep again, while they were flying. After a few hours, they arrived in the city lord's infirmary. They went to the city lord and reported what they have seen and what Broly believed to have heard the woman say. All right, I will inform the defense. Broly stay with the woman until she wakes up. She may calm down easier after seeing you again. Inform me through your badge. The other three of you should go back and tell your leader to meet me in the city hall as soon as possible. Understood. Shortly, the heads of the various races were assembled before they decided to call their people back. If this news was correct, they had to prepare themselves, but before they take further actions they wanted to wait until the woman wake up. Broly was sitting next to her bed, 
meditating. Over the time, the process of taking over control accelerated. The weaker the remnant's key got, the stronger and faster he got. He was close to having full control. After a day she woke up, seeing the stranger again, sitting cross-legged on the table with his eyes closed. She let out a relieved sigh before it hit her again, remembering the last few days which felt like a horrible nightmare to her. She was close to the tears again, before her train of thought was interrupted. A green pulse started radiating from the stranger. The pressure kept growing stronger, threatening to crush her until she let out a pain-filled groan. All the pressure withdrew, and a voice sounded out. Are you okay? Unexpectedly, the voice was gentle and filled with excitement, completely contrasting the dominating and violent pressure the stranger gave off a moment ago. He tapped on his badge before focusing his attention back to her. Yes, I'm all right. Good. Do you need something? Something to eat, to drink? I, I'm fine. My, my village was attacked. My parents. Dad. Sacrificed himself to save. Her voice became quieter as she mumbled to herself, seemingly not wanting to believe her own words. While she was deep in thoughts, the city lord appeared in the room, without the woman noticing. What's your name? Broly asked the woman, who was still mumbling to herself, coming out of daze as she looked at Broly. Violet, she responded in a quiet voice. Hey Violet, I'm Broly. You are in Elpis now. I swear nothing can hurt you anymore. He answered with a smile. I don't know what you are feeling right now, but I need you to be strong now. Tell us what happened so we can stop whatever attacked your village so it can't hurt anybody else. Broly said while holding her hand tightly. She looked at him, repeating the words, be strong, in her head. She took a deep breath. The sea attacked us. She recounted all that she saw, tried to remember the number and appearance of the CE, and any other details she could think of. Well done, Violet. Now rest well, we will take care of the rest. You have helped us tremendously. Broly was about to leave with the city lord, before she screamed out. Wait, I want to join the army. The army of the city, Elpis was entirely trained for the battles against the CE. They were at the front line, fighting and protecting the city and the villages in the vicinity. All right, I will send someone to pick you up. The city lord wanted to reject her at first, but after he saw the resolve in the young woman's eyes, he knew that she would find other ways to confront the sea east in the future to take revenge. It would be better if she had others to support her. They went back to the city's hall for emergencies. Here all the heads of the various races were already assembled to hear what she said after waking up. Broly was the only one who wasn't a leader, but as the champion, the other races acknowledged him with a nod. There were a lot of races involved other than the ten warrior races, which participated in the tournament. All the other races were mostly who were fonder of brains than brawn, as they would say it. They were the reason why the city was a scientifically developed on. All the training rooms were also invented by them. Broly was a bit confused by the point, if they had the technology, why didn't they leave? It wouldn't be that difficult to move everyone in the time span of a few years with the technology they had on hands. He could accept the fact that they didn't want to abandon their home planet, but they are risking going instinct to stay here, and they aren't a warrior race to begin with. The discussion became heated, as they didn't know how much weight they can put on Violet's story. They couldn't accumulate much in one year time to last them and all the villagers, who will be coming for long. Usually the attack would only last a month as long as the moon is up, but now it would be indefinite. Maybe now they would send all their hidden forces to attack. They couldn't be sure that it wouldn't last longer than the rations they have. They are testing the waters now, if it was as usual we would have a few days to come up with a solution, but for now we should call in an emergency situation, calling the villagers back for protection, temporarily at least. After the meeting was called off, the city lord asked Broly about his situation feeling that Broly was a bit different from before. Before a bit of aura would always leak out, but now, he couldn't sense anything. I completed my control. The city lord widened his eyes a bit. This would only mean that Broly's progress would only accelerate. The city lord looked forward, what Broly would show him in the future. To what extent he would grow. So, what do you want to do now, more missions? For now, no. 
I will wait here and train. The current me would be of limited use, but once I achieve one of my goals, I will be unstoppable on this planet. Broly's eyes were practically gleaming as he talked. Oh, pretty confident for a three-year-old. He, I hope you will surprise me. For the next days, the city was flocked with thousands of people from all kinds of races. There were more and more reports of sea sightings. Few of the sea were killed, but they didn't initiate a large-scale attack, except for a few villages, it was pretty much quiet. However, they did attack Elpis at one point. Broly saw their futile attempt of attacking the city's barrier, before being killed by the guards. Another week passed before the CE retracted towards the far north, seemingly gathering into a single place. Usually they would all retract to different directions, but now they focused on one point. It was an unfound behavior from them. Therefore, making their retreat from an initial happy event to an anxious one. Broly was still training undisturbed by those happenings anymore. This time he wasn't meditating, he was done with controlling his center. Now it was time for him to train his body. Although he didn't completely erase meditating from his routine, the last few days were just physical training under 400G in the gravity chamber. Doing basic body weight training that he did in his past life. He spent hours in there before he went to the other disciples, who were training in their respective training rooms, for a spar. He would usually battle it out with Zinjo or Atrog for close combat before going to Yanari to have a taste of her white feather shot and Blitz for his incredible speed to train his mobility and speed. He was increasing tremendously after each and every battle he had. So much it frightened the others, putting them under a lot of competitive pressure. He always saved the best for last. He loved to fight against Aaliyah, as she always polished her techniques and movements. Her talent for martial arts were top class. In terms of using her strength in the most effective way, she was considered the best amongst the disciples. He was learning a lot from her. Adapting to her way of fighting only made his movements increasingly sharp. Of course, Aaliyah progressed in leaps and bounds as well, to be exact every sparring partner from Broly did. Since it was rare to have such a dangerous sparring partner, who could not only dodge most attacks but also just bulldoze through attacks without flinching, if he wanted to. Against him, they were constantly on alert, if they didn't want to be punched into a wall. After a month, the CE were nowhere to be seen again and showed no sign to attack again before the moon would show up. For the next year, Broly had been training every day. He not only trained under heavy gravity but also sparred with everyone he could find. He quickly became an unstoppable force in the close combat department. But his key technique was by no means weak. He invented a few techniques and became more adept in it. He was not the best in key manipulation as his key inherited the violent nature after he took over control, making key manipulation a bit harder. Of course, no one would engage in a key contest with him, as he could just brute force himself to victory. After a while, he even started asking for pointers from other race leaders or their strongest fighter to push himself even further. Many accepted the request as they could gauge his strength and train their fighters. Certainly advantageous for all the parties involved. With every training and sparring session, he became stronger but strangely enough, although he thought that he should be able to access his super scion form already, he couldn't. He observed his S-cells and found out that it had something to do with the mother blood crystal. It appeared that, because the cells were elevated to greater heights, they were less receptive to mutation. They needed much more energy to mutate. Although it pushed his transformation a bit back, he could feel that he would only benefit from this postponement. Since his Super Scion mode was delayed for now, he went to learn the next best thing, Great Ape or alternatively called Ozuru Transformation. He would have to learn it either way, as it may give him clues about the transformation into Super Scion for even though he was not sure if it is a real from as it was said to be non-canon. But he couldn't help but feel that it is, since he himself shouldn't be canon as well, that is if he ignored the new Broly movie. So, since the possibility was there, he would investigate it even if he couldn't achieve Super Scion 4, he would at least have learned more about his body, which shouldn't be a bad thing. There were few Scion elites that could control themselves as Oazarus, but only one was able to create a power ball, an energy sphere used as a replacement for an absent moon. It created Blut's waves like any other celestial body when it reflects rays of sunlight. It took him a month to master this technique. 
Now he was on an open field meditating to steady his mind for the transformation as he wasn't sure how he would react to the Ozuru form. The city lord assisted him, as he was probably the only one strong enough if Broly lost control. Although his base power wouldn't be enough to contain Broly in an accident but as most from the Hera race, he could transform. Tripling his base power of 50 million, resulting in a battle power of 150 million, it should be more than enough for Broly who approached 100 million after his strength increased tenfold. After meditating for an hour, he stood up and created the power ball before throwing it into the sky. He stared at it for a while until he noticed his life force from his tail going into a turmoil. The power started cursing through his veins, burning inside him. Suddenly, his mind went blank. The city lord stared at Broly, seeing the pupils going completely white. Fangs started to appear, and his head shape changed to one of an ape. Broly's body started rapidly growing and with it his hair all around his body. After a few moments, his body was covered in fur. His eyes were now dyed in a blood-red tint. Broly only stopped increasing in size until he stood at a 30-meter height. Grower, a giant ape exuding a tremendous amount of power was standing in front of the city lord, roaring into the sky. The city lord saw Broly notice him. He looked over and opened his mouth. Sensing that, something didn't seem right, as he couldn't sense any intelligent in the eyes of the giant ape in front of him. Hey Broly, are you L-Dash? Before he could finish, he saw Key gathering inside Broly's mouth. The city lord instantly transformed. His bluish skin changed to a lime green, and his eyebrows and hair turned red. His muscles increased dramatically. He crossed his arms in front of him to block the incoming attack. He waited for a second before putting his guard down to look. Growl, he saw the giant ape lying down onto the ground while clutching his head in pain. Arg! Broly suddenly beat his own head. The city lord looked tensely at the happenings in front of him. Although he offered a helping hand, he would rather avoid the fight with a beast. He was more interested in the transformation itself and how it would be influenced by the increasing life force. He could only get information if Broly was conscious and actually remembers what happens. He looked at the power ball in the sky before sending a key blast at it, destroying it in the process. The city lord waited it out as Broly struggled to regain his consciousness. In Broly's perspective, he was currently fighting for supremacy in his head. His subconscious taking over, pushing his conscious to the back. Maybe it was because of his meditations or his previous experience of fighting over control, but he started to win and retained his conscious slowly. A few minutes later, after rolling around and smashing small hills, Broly stopped moving. He slowly stood up and looked around, seeing the destruction he caused. The city lord already in his base form sat on a rock not far away. Master, how long was I out? Broly's voice in his ape form was booming in a low tone, creating airwaves by simply speaking. Only for a few minutes. Thank you, master. If you had put me out early, I feel like it would have been more difficult in the future. No problem. So, how does it feel? Incredible. My body feels like an unstoppable force. Broly started throwing a few punches before realizing that he was around the same speed as before the transformation. My speed multiplied as well, but my massive size reduced it by quite a bit. Although my power increased my strength tenfold, but my comparatively slow speed and size makes me a huge target. Especially for those who can absorb my life force with every contact. Well, after I can turn into a Super Scion, I won't have much use for it. At least until I have full control over the Super Scion transformation. So Broly, how do you feel? How is your life force? Everything is normal, I guess. Besides my life force flaring up a bit and rushing through my body, I don't feel much different. Well, I can feel myself being stronger, but it doesn't seem to burden my body. It actually feels pretty nice to be honest. Ha ha ha. Well, this is a transformation part of your Scion heritage. It should be normal to feel comfortable. Maybe that was how your ancestors looked. Ha ha. Maybe. Let's wait for a bit. I want to transform again. I try to retain my conscious immediately. After 10 minutes, Broly started to revert into his base form. The moment he did, he started panting. 
Apparently, the transformation's after-effects are pretty heavy. The other scions said that the transformation process back to normal is very exhausting. Even Broly needed to take a rest for an hour before being fully recovered again. Thereafter, he transformed hundreds of times over the course of two months. At the start, his mind always went blank during and shortly after the transformation, but the duration was lessening with each transformation. There were also a few times when he was already exhausted but transformed anyway, resulting in him going on a rampage. Fortunately, the city lord quickly knocked him out, forcing him to revert. The process of transforming one's body and then trying to regain one's conscience was a very tiring experience for the body and especially for the mind. Unknowingly, Broly trained his mental strength by doing something he was born with. After training for two whole months, he managed to remain conscious even during the transformation. He could feel how his body reacted to the blood's waves and how it was triggered. He became increasingly aware about the hidden strength that were inside his cells, which were partly released by the Ozuru transformation. He could by now even use some of this hidden strength without the transformation. Furthermore, he forced the strength out by triggering the life force inside, similarly the blood's waves do it. But it was incredibly difficult to bring out even 1%. He would need much more time to master it fully. It was different from his S cells as those were mutations and because of that he figured that he might be able to stack the effects. It would be something similar to the Golden Great Ape, but instead of transforming into a Super Scion while being an Ozuru, one would turn force the same hidden strength out while being a Super Scion. Broly believed that this would result into something different, even though the concepts were the same. Only the sequence would be different. After the initial excitement of the prospect of mastering a strong technique and transformation for the future, he went on to Giant to relax for a few days. He figured after the crazy training he was up to for the last year, he needed some time to rest. His body didn't seem to tremendously rise in strength anymore, so he decided to take a break for a few days. He remembered something from his past life about rest days, which were said to be as important as the workouts. Besides, the giant ape transformation gave him reassurance that he could at least defend himself. Broly wouldn't easily find an opponent other than the CE, and those didn't show up for the last year. With that being said, he figured that he would take the time to relax and ask Giant about the general situation from their race. As he was walking down the street, he was greeted by dozens of people smiling and waving at him. He was kind of getting used to this sight. After all, he was the champion, the strongest of the former youngest generation. With his increasing visits to other races leaders and top fighters, he was getting more and more famous. His talent for battle was admired by the young warriors, and there even popped up groupies. Although there were girls wanting to throw themselves at him, he wasn't affected by those. He contributed to being only four years old with absolutely no libido. Broly was a bit overwhelmed with the situation at first. Being almost overrun by a bunch of strangers can be a bit stressful. But simply by releasing his aura, they parted to make way for him. Aura was something he learned by exchanging for a book called Winning Without Fighting. It basically described how one could pressure the opponent by one's aura. It was different to the aura which pressured the opponent through ki, as this would only be helpful against much weaker enemies who don't have as much ki as oneself. The aura talked about in the book wasn't an energy-based aura, but one filled with spirit or intent. The aura pressured the opponent through the spirit, challenging the opponent's mental strength. But pressuring was just one use of it. Since it was basically intent, it was perfectly made for feints. The opponent wouldn't realize if the next incoming attack would be real or not, as a feint filled with intent wouldn't easily be able to be distinguished. There were also methods described to attack, but those were more advanced, as those Broly already learned. As he walked through the crowd while releasing his aura, the people just felt an invisible wall pushing them back, even though they were clearly moving by themselves. Making his way towards the headquarters, he saw a military court nearby with several recruits training. The intensity has been apparently increased since the surprise attack. Broly even saw Violet training with the other recruits. After 20 minutes of walking, he arrived at the Scion space. Before he could get in and ask for Jine, he saw her supervising the training of the new generation. He went up to greet her. After the time he spent in Elpis, he has long surpassed Jine in height. So, from the outside, 
it looked like two adults had a conversation with each other, although only one was an adult and the other was a young child. While asking about the situation of the headquarters, he was told that the higher-ups were actually pretty tense about the happenings of the CE. It concerned them as they suddenly attacked two years too early, contradicting their usual behavior, and then gathered somewhere in the north. It seems they were preparing for something. In the worst case, they were preparing for a full-out war, so most races were prompted by the city council to increase their supplies and to train harder. Jine, if you are all so concerned, why don't you leave? The technology is more than enough to leave for other planets. Isn't it? Sigh. Yes, it is. We won't leave because we can't. In ancient times, the natives tried to leave early on, but they were unsuccessful or that is what we believe what happened. The city lord has probably described it to you already about the three origin crystals. The cornerstones of Perditus. Perditus? Ah, yes. That's how the planet was referred to in ancient texts. After they arrived in the solar system, the crystals lost their might and with it, Perditus lost its protection. The outside space was distorted by the planet's teleportation and was incredibly dangerous. Maybe they didn't know, but the natives decided to travel outside in search for their home. That was also the last event the natives were still around. Some say they successfully escaped and never turned back. Others say that they were torn apart by space. Either way, thereafter, different species emerged from space rifts on this planet. Fast forwarding a few thousands of years and here we are. The outside space still as chaotic as ever. We don't know what would greet us if we flew inside the distorted space. What would greet us on the other side or inside? Would we even be able to survive the space? Most are more afraid of the unknown than some creatures that we have clashed with already. Although they are strong, they aren't unkillable. Rather fight the enemy than face the unknown. Huh? Yes. Now you know why we don't just leave. Ah. Broly, could you do me a favor and fight against the class I'm supervising? I think it would be nice if they spar against someone much stronger than them in their age. Their age? Oh right. Sometimes I forget that I'm only, what is it? For years old. Sure. Why not? Jine beamed after she heard the answer. She turned towards the children who were sparring with each other and gathered them in front of her and Broly. I have a little surprise for you. The champion from last year's Prodigy Tournament agreed to spar with you. You can go all out, he can handle it. She told the group of eight while slapping Broly's back. He stumbled a bit forward. He regained his balance and was about to say something before being interrupted. Broly, the champion. Wow. Are you really as old as we are? Are you really a super scion? Why are you so tall? Why do you still have your tail? He was bombarded with questions, he blanked out for a second. He quickly came out of his daze, before clearing his throat. Cough. Yes, I am four years old. Not a super scion yet. I like my tail. As for my height, why was he taller than them? With 180 centimeters in height, he was already approaching the original adult's height. If he remembered correctly, as an adult he should become over two meters tall. He started to think about it. As he was literally looking down at the group of kids in front of him, they all looked around 13 years of age, but they couldn't even compare to him. From the series, he knew that this should be the norm. Kakarot was also only growing after he became 15, getting several growth spurts until he turned 25. It was a scion trait. Scions have evolved to have a slowed aging process upon reaching physical maturity in order to fight longer. But why would they only reach maturity at 25, why didn't they grow up faster? Hmm? Aren't Taro and the others a bit too tall as well, why are we so tall? They should have the same height as the group in front of him, right? What about us? Differentiate us with them. Maybe our strength? Maybe it has something to do with the life force. With more life force and energy pumping through our veins, it would certainly make sense why it would allow us to grow faster. We could also be influenced by the mother blood crystal. After all it evolved our cells, well either way doesn't really matter. It is because I'm strong. Now enough with the questions, let's fight. Without waiting any further, Broly and the group started to fight each other. Needless to say that the group couldn't hold a handle to him. After the sparring session, the group was panting on the ground, while Broly was talking leisurely with Jine. 
The next morning, he woke up and went outside for a bit, before sparring against the kids again. With them, he went to a Scion restaurant and had lunch with them. The portions really honored the name of the restaurant, a Scion's meal. Broly could barely eat two dishes before his stomach threatened to burst. For the evenings, he started to read up on some information about the planet and legends of the crystals he borrowed from the city lord, as he would try to find and absorb the other two crystals as well. This continued for a few days, before he decided to take a break from his rest. Although he sparred a bit with the kids, he was itching for his training. He went back to the city lord's palace, going straight for the training's room, shortly meditating under 500G. Still under 500G, he started his workout routine with the basics, deadlifts, bench presses, squats, and other exercises. He had asked some of the scientists to develop him some durable weights which could withstand the high gravity pressure. Although the poles from the weights were a bit bigger than he was used to, it served its purpose. He segregated his workout routine into weight training just to increase his strength martial arts training so he could use his muscles more efficiently and ended off by sparring with different opponents. Another year has passed and he stopped getting stronger. His strength stagnated at around 12 million, which was higher than most in the city and with the Ozu reform, he would be probably only be second to the city lord. He didn't know why he didn't get any stronger, but he could tell that his S cells still continued to grow. So, he placed his focus on meditating again. It didn't really affect his base strength, but he could worry about it after he achieved Super Scion. Now other problems arrived. It has been three years since the CE attacked. Under full moon, Another attack was incoming. The whole city was tense as they waited on full alert for the enemies to appear. Broly was waiting as well, standing tall on the wall with his assigned group consisting of A's, Taro, Aaliyah, and Kana. Broly watched a swarm of black figures crawling, running, and flying towards Elpis. The villagers were long evacuated to the shelter inside the walls. Still kilometers away, the CE were already bombarded with artillery. Although some races didn't have the muscles to go into the fight themselves, but their weapons could. They armed the weaker ones and mounted huge laser cannons on the top of the walls, constantly firing towards the black swarm. It lit up the night sky with bright lights flashing on and out. Of course, technology only brought them this far, it only thinned out the herd, but it wouldn't be able to hurt the stronger ones. In the first line of defense were the top warriors and leaders of the races, taking head on the strongest of the crowd. Their power level reached into the upper 20 million. Considering they all had trump cards to boost their strength, they were a force to be reckoned with. They were the currently strongest fighters at the front line. Following them were the veterans, experienced warriors through hundreds of battles. There was a total of five defense lines slaying every CE the previous line let slip through. At the end, the last line of defense were the disciples of the city lord protecting the wall and its barrier. Although many of these disciples were statistically stronger than many of the veterans, they lacked experience. Obviously, they knew that the disciples could hold their own in battle, but this was not a fight, it was war. Most of these younglings haven't experienced war, so they were chosen as the last line of defense. The CE would be considerable thinned out by the time they reached the wall, making them perfect targets for the younglings. They could focus on battling only one opponent at the time. Broly watched as the sea battled against Elpis army. Their enemies were completely obliterated. They couldn't even make it past the first line of defense. Jine and Daz told Broly that the first day would be them testing the waters, trying to see if there was a hole in the defense. This time it appeared that they would only attack from the north, out of the forest since they gathered there and there were no other places they were sighted. Still, they got scouts scanning the area around the city if some seas tried to sneak up on them. From experience, the attack would only last an hour before they would retreat again, just to come out at another day with stronger individuals in their ranks. Almost an hour later, the CE still poured towards Elpis. Something is wrong. Weren't the numbers supposed to decrease by now? Aaliyah approached him with similar thoughts. Yes, they should. Prepare for battle. Stay alert. This will be tougher than we thought. Broly shouted, bringing Taro out of his relaxed state. Aze was as serious as ever, and Kana was furrowing her brows. The sea's strength was easily determined. As they were absorbing life force from other creatures, it bloated their bodies, making them bigger. 
they were classified from rank F to A with A being the highest. The cannon fodders were class F and E, they were usually around 3 meters of height. They usually had power levels below a million. Those were only feeding on weaker people like villagers or non-combatant. Class D and C were ranging from 1 to 5 million, which was represented by their height, going up to 10 meters of height. Class B Cs were only handled by the strongest warriors and race leaders. They were towering tall with 50 meters of height and their power were hovering around an estimated 30 to 40 million. But the strongest of them, the A class, were different. They had different bodies than the other ones. They could be easily identified. Unlike the glue-like body type the other Cs had, their bodies were more solid. It looked like they were wearing full body armor of solid metal. It seemed that they evolved from the massive amount of life force they absorbed. They compressed all their energies into a two meter tall body. They exuded a tremendous amount of strength just with their bodies. Their speed and strength were immense. They became increasingly powerful after reaching this class and until now only one has been sighted. But it was not doubted that there are more of these. The only one sighted was the one who injured the city lord and if it weren't for the fact that it, as all the other CEs, was unable to fire key attacks or any other energy-based attacks, the city lord would have died at its hands by now. Broly watched as the war unfold. Almost all the lower classes were eradicated, but instead of retreating, more class Cs were appearing. There were even some who managed to break through to the fourth defense line before they were killed. After they came closer to Broly, he saw the life force in them. It was just radiating out of them, much more prominent than in every other person on the same level. After they died, the energy didn't fade or disperse like he previously thought. They didn't leave any corpses behind because the bodies would be converted into life force before flying uniformly away. It appeared that the energy they stored was flying towards somewhere, but Broly couldn't tell, whereas his senses weren't able to reach out far. Broly had a bad feeling about this, as he thought of a possibility. What if all the energy gathered in one place, forming a sea? If that was the case, it would mean that he tremendously underestimated this enemy. Broly steeled his heart as he watched them slaughter their enemies. After another three hours, the attack ceased. They suffered minor losses and the troops were exhausted. Another batch was heading out, scouting the area as a preemptive warning system, as the others went inside the city to rest. Broly and his group were not nearly as tired as the others, since they only gave a helping hand by shooting some key attacks from behind. Broly wanted to head in, transform into an Oozuru and slaughter the enemies as well, but he restrained himself. His sudden presences would disrupt the flow of the veterans, and he alone wasn't enough to cover the whole battlefield. He couldn't just step out of line just because he felt like he wanted to do more, he would do more harm than good. Besides, he had a group to lead, he couldn't just go solo and leave them alone. Their rest was quick to pass. The next day, a lot of movement were registered. The army was already assembled, as well as Broly's group. They again stood on the wall watching the war unfold. Very similar to yesterday, the CE had increasingly powerful individuals in their ranks which resulted in a few bypassing the fourth defense line. The defense line struggled hard to eliminate every CE that came attacking. After all, there were barely a hundred who could go against the class C, but there were more than just a few hundred who kept attacking. They were largely outnumbered, weren't it for the fact that the CE were weak against key attacks, Elpis would have fallen already. The defense lines were threatened to break completely. The city lord started to appear to reduce the stress on the other race's leaders and veterans. The city lord was only supposed to appear when a class A emerged, but he couldn't stand still after it escalated to such a degree. Even in the presence of the city lord, the CE relentlessly were heading towards the wall. The last defense line had a somber face, as they saw the sheer size of the attack. They could feel the shockwaves from the clashes and smelled the blood that was spilled. They knew that they couldn't let even one through, otherwise it would lead to a massacre in the city. Every CE which broke through the fourth defense headed towards Broly, apparently attracted to his tail. Broly wanted to meet them head on. He didn't use any key attacks, he wanted to know if they could extract his life force. As he could control his life force he was confident to negate their influence, but he wanted to test it out before it gets even more serious. Aaliyah, if you see me not handling it, just shoot some key blast. 
It is better to be injured than have my life force absorbed. All right. Broly dashed forward directly at the closest. He crossed the few hundred meters distance in an instance. He dived under the slash of the first sea. Without stopping, he rushed at the one right behind the first and punched out. It was sent flying without any resistant. The second could hardly react to the sheer speed that Broly displayed. Without waiting, he spanned around and kicked the approaching CE away. He quickly followed up. Before the CE could rebalance itself in the air, Broly already appeared above him and punched him into the ground, immediately creating a huge crater. Broly wasn't going to stop with that, he quickly crashed towards the crater. With his fingers extended, he stabbed into the chest of the CE. Before he could pull his hand out, the CE started fading. The second CE finally caught up to Broly and tried to attack from the back but was quickly hit by a key blast from Aaliyah. It was badly injured by the surprise attack. It bled its black liquid onto the ground, which quickly faded as well. Broly didn't hesitate and grabbed the head of the CE with one hand and the body with the other. He tore apart the head from the body and threw it onto the ground like garbage. Both parts faded away and Broly retreated to the wall. And how was it? Aaliyah asked him, seeing Broly in thoughts as he looked at his hand. Hmm, can they absorb your life force? No, but I can. What? I can absorb their life force. The others were surprised by the revelation. It was unheard of someone forcefully absorbing foreign life force, of course, except for the seas themselves. It was surprising as the seas' main strength was absorbing life force. This was what they made them so dangerous. Now not only have they failed to absorb Broly's but were absorbed by its target instead. Aaliyah stepped forward. Can you absorb my life force? She struck out her arm, waiting for Broly to grasp it. Broly thought for a moment before holding her arm. He tried to forcefully absorb Aaliyah's life force, but to no avail. No reaction at all. Maybe there are other conditions. Broly thought out aloud. Never mind. Focus on the war again. He tried to direct his attention towards the ongoing war as well, but he couldn't help but feel a bit distracted. The life force he just absorbed was astonishing pure. It seemed to enhance his own life force, purifying it. Although the changes were minuscule, they were still there. From the corner of his eye, he saw someone dashing forwards to the fourth defense line. HM? Hey! It was Kana who rushed forwards. Stop! Broly roared as he quickly followed behind. Kana! Shit! What is she doing? Taro cursed as he and Aaliyah tried to follow them, but they were stopped by A's. Wait! We have to stay. The last defense would have a huge hole without us. Let Broly bring her back. Aaliyah, you too. You are the second strongest of us. We can't afford you guys to leave. But... Aaliyah tried to say something but couldn't refute his words. Taro furrowed his brows in dissatisfaction but didn't say anything. Broly almost caught up to her, as he saw her firing key blasts at a few CEs which were overpowering two veterans, a woman and a man. He saw how they struggled to keep themselves alive. Broly accelerated until he looked like a beam flying directly at the attacking CEs. He crashed into one of them, plunging his entire arm inside the chest of one. Again, he felt it to be surprisingly easy to absorb its life force. The other CE was taken care of by Kana. Broly already saw through the life force that both were already dead. Before he could have pre-made her for her actions, he saw her quickly ran up to the woman's corpse, checking on her. Not feeling a pulse, she panicked before trying to give the woman a healing capsule. Kana, they are already dead. You can't save them, go back to your position. Broly furrowed his eyebrows after she saw her running to the man, giving him a capsule as well. He saw that more CEs were approaching, but also the reinforcement from the city headed this way. They had to go back, otherwise there would be too many at one place. He already attracted the CEs with his tail, and the flow of the battle in the third and fourth row already slowly shifted towards their direction. They quickly had to move. Kana, I, I thought I saw my parents. She was still sitting next to the woman with her head down. We don't have time for this. We are going back. Broly grabbed her arm, forcing her up and sprinted towards their original position. No, I will kill every last one of them. 
Broly suddenly felt a finger being pulled. While running, he looked back at her. He saw her gripping his index finger and her key flaring up. Arg! Kana broke his finger and quickly escaped his grasp. After he loosened up, she shot towards the front line. You! You! Broly's eyes went cold as he looked at the fast-fleeing Kana crack. He readjusted his finger before turning into a blur. Kana only saw red. She only wanted to kill them all. The more she saw them kill soldiers, the angrier she became. She was almost at the first defense line until a figure suddenly appeared in front of her. Without time to dodge, she crashed into it. It didn't even budge for a centimeter. The figure was Broly, but before she could say something, she was grabbed by the throat. The next moment, they moved at high speed away from the battlefield. Kana struggled to get out of his grasp, but this time she couldn't even pull a finger. The hand wouldn't move. It was like a steel claw wrapped around her throat. A few hundred kilometers away from the battle, they stopped. Shortly afterward, she was thrown to the ground, bouncing a few hundred meters until she stopped. Cough, cough. She slowly got up. She was slightly injured by the casual throw. Broly, what are you doing? We have to go back to help them. Broly's eyes went cold after hearing her screaming. Help? You helped none with your actions. You probably haven't even realized what you did. Wadash, do you know why we were stationed at the very back? She got irritated because she saw that he was hellbent to talk. Because we have never participated in a war. Now Sidash, yes, but war is messy. Why are they so fixated that we stay in the back? The reason for this because we can't restrain our life force. Every soldier which is fighting out there has been fighting against them for years. They know the basic. They can restrain it. Obviously not completely, which would be asking for too much, but to the degree that it is almost the same level as the others in their defense line. This leads to the CE spreading out equally on the battlefield. Why are you dash? Now what happens when someone inexperienced just runs through three defense lines? It's like a torch in the dark for the CE. I they probably were after you and your ta dash. I can control my life force, and it is not difficult to hide my tail. You just didn't think. Now, before you schmuck off to the city, Broly suddenly turned into a beam, instantly appearing in front of Kana, punching her stomach. Like a cannonball, she shot through the air. Broly followed her quickly, giving her no time to recover. He surpassed her and kicked her upwards, but before she flew away, he grabbed her leg and slammed her into the ground. He slowly lifted her up by the leg, looking into her eyes, as blood dripped out of her mouth across the cheek to the ground. He let her fall to the ground. She groaned a bit before she slowly got up, staying wobbly on her feet. After I told you that you could be a super scion, you thought you could do everything on your own. You didn't take advices, even if it is from the city lord. You ignore a planetary threat and hole up in the training chamber. Now you ignore my orders and the only time you do something is after you believe to have seen your parents. Your actions endangered not only you, but every one of us. You were attracting a lot of CEs. If I didn't bring you out, you would be already dead. Broly paused for a bit. He saw that she was gritting her teeth. She obviously didn't want to hear all of it. What a way to disrespect your parents. They sacrificed their lives for you, and you just throw this chance away like you didn't even care. Well, after pushing everyone away and training for your revenge, it is not like you had a life to begin with. You. You don't know anything. They are my family. If I can't take revenge, I would have survived for nothing. She was already trembling from anger and sadness. Survived for nothing? Aliyah told me how you described your family to her. If you really think that they wanted you to take revenge for them, maybe they weren't as caring as you say they were. Shut up. An incredible force suddenly radiated out of Kana and her hair started to rise as she growled. Broly quickly distanced himself from her. The earth started to tremble as lightning hit the ground. This is... Broly quickly looked at the full moon in the sky, which he avoided the entire time the war was ongoing. His body rapidly expanded, and fur grew on his body. He transformed into an Oozuru. He again directed his focus on Kana, who was trembling. Her hair started to shine in a golden light from time to time. 
Broly could feel the energy coming from Kana. The air was electrified as more and more lighting started to rain upon the earth. You know nothing! She screamed through her teeth. The ground below her crumbled into tiny bits before flying into the air. Broly squinted his eyes as he saw that. Her base strength has risen to four million in the past two years. With the multiplier of Super Scion, he would hardly be a match for her in his Oozuru form. Ah! A golden aura shot out of her, enveloping her completely as she screamed out. Her hair turned completely golden. For a short moment, her pupils disappeared before green eyes stared at him. The pressure Broly felt from the gaze was immense. You're going to pay for what you have said. God damn it, she disappeared from his sight. He looked around, searching for her. Suddenly, she was right in front of his face. He saw her punch out, but he couldn't react at all. He was sent flying into a small hill, completely crumbling under his weight. He heard several bones crack from his face. He quickly got up only to see her flying in front of him again. This time he just punched out. Kana didn't dodge, instead met it with a punch of her own. From the outside perspective, everyone would think that the punch from the 30-meter tall giant would entirely crush the ant-like opponent. But the exact opposite happened, his punch bounced back over his head. Kana seemingly teleported to his now open side and punched out again. Arg! Broly stumbled a few dozens of steps back as he held his now bloody side. Several rips were broken, as was his arm. Without giving him any rest, she appeared slightly above him, with her fingers intertwined and her arms up in the air. She quickly struck down on top of his head into the ground. He felt dizzy after he heard a crack from the top of his head. He lay down on the ground, heavily wounded, before he felt a sharp pain from his backside. He looked back only to see his tail being ripped off. He quickly reverted. Without giving her time to prevent it, he threw a few healing capsules in. She looked at his actions with narrowed eyes. The several capsules did their wonder, they regained its ability of instantly healing of the fruit of life. Although it had some side effect, Broly didn't care right now. He stood up and looked at Kana. So, what are you going to do now? Without your Oozuru form, your strength is not even close to mine, she said while throwing the reverted tail away. That doesn't make my words any less true, Sage. Appearing in front of him, she punched his face. This time Broly wasn't sent flying, he stumbled a few meters with his head bent backwards. He stopped and leaned back forwards. Broly's gaze was filled with rage. There were bulging veins on his face. Kana was stunned for a second, before reassuring herself. Humph! I am the legendary Super Scion. You can do nothing to me. You ignorant brat. Only because you transformed ahead of me, you think you can beat me? Unconsciously, she stepped back, as she felt Broly's key rising. Broly was enveloped by his green key which pierced into the heavens. You wa ha 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 the earth was trembling. The ground broke apart. Broly's key was rapidly rising. It felt like his strength was limitless. Black clouds sprawled across the sky. Lighting illuminated the night as bolts of white lightning shot towards Broly. The broken ground beneath them crumbled into dust as it flew into the sky. Kana was terrified as she felt the frightening energy spewing out of Broly. Her legs started shaking under the pressure Broly gave off. She couldn't help but distance herself a few meters backwards. No trace of her previous arrogance to be seen. H H H H H H H H H H H H H Broly suddenly stopped laughing. The sky turned quite as if the previous thunderstorm was just an illusion. His green key retracted into his body. Crack. Broly's skin started to crack as green light shone out of his body. A terrifying roar came out of Broly's mouth. Boom. His body exploded as the energy burst out of him. A spherical explosion started growing, destroying anything in its path. Impulses of green light erupted out of him, changing the light scheme of this planet into a green one, before gathering back to him. Kana was sent flying by the shockwave. Only after a few hundred meters was she able to regain her foothold. She couldn't believe what she saw. Why you? Be Broly? In the hundred-meter massive crater stood a two-five-tall figure, a man with a massive frame and bulging steel-like muscles. 
Broly stood there as his green flame-like ki was enveloping his whole body. His hair turned completely green and stood on end. His pupils disappeared, leaving only white back. Kana was barely able to hold her ground as she looked into his complete white eyes. Her instinct was telling her to run, to escape. She couldn't help but fear the man who stood in front of her. She tried to move, but she couldn't. Her body wasn't obeying her anymore. The legend was the only thing she could mutter. She fell backwards onto her butt as her face was filled with terror. Broly growled, seemingly struggling with this immense power. His body was tense, twitching from time to time. A moment later he started to relax again as he showed a smile. But in his current form he seemed even more evil with it. It looked like a devil's smile, a simple smile conveying his sadistic nature. He was mocking her as he watched her tremble before him. So, you are the legendary Super Scion. Ha 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 ha. What a joke. I show you what the legend really prophesied. The only payment, your life. Kana shrieked as she heard this, still sitting on the ground. She seemed to have flashbacks, from the time she thought she would die with her father. Thinking that today would be the day she dies, surprisingly, gave her courage to stand back up and face Broly. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't be fun otherwise. Ha ha. With these words he disappeared from Kana's eyes, before she felt her head being grabbed and being picked up. She struggled to get out, but she couldn't budge the hand. Her backward kicks had no effect. Suddenly she felt something hit her. It felt like a comet struck her back, sending her flying thousands of kilometers, only to be stopped by the mountainside nearby. She was coughing out blood and panted heavily. The one hit already brought her to the verge of death. She was embedded in the mountainside. She took out some healing capsules with her still intact arm. Her back almost snapped with the one punch he gave her. She needed to recover fast. As she took in the healing capsules, she saw a massive figure standing at the entrance of the little cave. She created on impact. He was watching her heal. She could see that he was unconcerned even if she completely recovered. She saw his smile, revealing his attention to torture her. Didn't you say I wouldn't be near you in strength? Ha 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 ha. Foo. Take this. Having recovered, she turned around and shot out a key blast. But she didn't stop. She kept firing key blasts endlessly. Only after a few minutes, after she exhausted herself, she stopped and popped in another healing capsule to recover her lost key. A huge smokescreen was created, and a huge figure just walked through it. Under the barrage of her key blasts, Half of the mountain was blown up, but he was completely unfazed. There was not even a scratch on him, even his clothes were fine. Hmph, <laughs> this this all you got? He mocked her with a grin. If that's the case, it is my turn. He straightforwardly grabbed towards her head again. Seeing this, she used a key sphere to stop the approaching hand. That's what was supposed to happen. The hand didn't even slow down as he grasped her golden hair. He lifted her up and smashed her into the ground. Thunder-like explosions sounded out as he repeatedly hammered her head into rocks. Her face was completely bloody. Her eyes were unfocused. She nearly lost conscious due to the hit to her head. She felt dizzy and had the strong urge to just lie down and sleep. She could feel then. Broly put a capsule in her mouth. She was slowly recovering. Her focus came back. But before she could try to escape, she was picked up by her leg and flung down the mountain. After she landed, she quickly used the ground to keep her momentum and tried to flee. All of a sudden, a voice sounded out right behind her, making her look over her shoulder. Let me help you. Ha ha ha, Broly said while pushing his palm, which held a small energy sphere, closer to her back. Boom. She slid across the floor, bouncing a couple of times before landing inside a small pond. Broly quickly followed her in and fisher her out. He held the unconscious Kana up by the throat. She was already out of her Super Scion transformation and was already one foot in the grave. He slapped her a couple of times, until she woke up in a groan. He forced her to eat another healing capsule, which would only extend her suffering. One capsule couldn't heal the dozens of broken bones all over her body. Her head had suffered the worst injuries. Broly started to squeeze his hand, which he held her throat with. 
it started cracking, as Kana could only release quiet groans. Boom. Hmm. He let Kana fall in surprise and turned around. Broly saw Aaliyah with an outstretched arm, indicating her as the criminal that shot his back. A Zentaro approached from the sides as well. Broly, what are you doing? She is going to die. Aaliyah screamed as she saw Kana laying on the ground. Her whole body was covered in blood. There were numerous cuts and bruises all over her. Her arm was bent at an odd angle. She was obviously heavily injured. There would not be needed much to kill her. What are you doing here? Why are you not at the defense line? Broly furrowed his brows, becoming displeased by the tone Aaliyah used. They retreated after the thunderstorm began. What is going? Why does she look like that? She just took responsibility for her actions. Broly smiled at them. Taro gulped as he saw this. The pressure Broly unconsciously released was unreal. They all felt like they were thousands of meters underwater. They could hardly move their body. After he locked onto them. Aaliyah tried to walk past him towards Kana to give her a healing capsule. But she was stopped by an outstretched arm. I think you should leave. This has nothing to do with you. Broly spoke as he squinted his eyes. Aaliyah could not help but picture herself being torn apart if she made another step. But she had to, although they distanced themselves a bit from each other, Kana and she were still friends. Don't you think it's enough already? Look at her. She can barely move. Broly sensed that Taro was slowly inching forward. He could see that Taro was incredibly nervous. His legs and arms were slightly shaking. Broly, I think you should calm down first. You are clearly not yourself. Oh, that's what you think. No, I have not lost my mind. Ha 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 ha, he grinned as he looked at them, who were fearing to make a move. Ha! With a key shockwave he sent them flying. Suddenly a figure dashed towards the unconscious Kana and picked her up. Oh, you don't! Broly shouted as he threw a key sphere at A's and Kana. But before it reached them, it was blasted away. Aaliyah shot it away as Taro rushed towards Broly with a punch. Broly just tanked it as he looked at him and slapped him out of his way. He saw Aze flying away with Kana. Aaliyah positioned herself between them. Broly stop. She is still our friend. She made a mistake. But she doesn't deserve to die. She cried out. The way I see it, she tried to kill me so I will kill her. And if you stand in my way, you will suffer the same fate. Broly dash, before she could say anything further, she was punched in her gut. Salvia was dripping out of her mouth. She kneeled on the ground with her face supporting her body. She used her hand to raise her upper body, only to be hit at in her neck, instantly passing out. Broly quickly shot through the air. It was only a matter of seconds before he caught up to them. Kana, it is time for you to die. He grabbed Aze at his shoulder and flicked him to the ground. Kana turned around. With a quick scream her key flared up in a golden light. Her muscles increased a bit. She turned into a super scion. Aze had to have given her few healing capsules to recover so quickly. With a mocking smile he looked at her. Any last words? E. Kana only bit her lips as she looked at Broly and then at Aze in a crater on the floor. Not moving. She reminisced the last few years she has struggled. Even as a super scion, her struggle would be in vain. She knew she couldn't escape him. She would be dying at the hands of the one she envied. She slowly lost her will to fight against Broly as she reminisced the last few years she has struggled. She looked at him. The one was born for greatness. His latent power and his battle awareness was constantly increasing. There was no way she could keep up with someone like this. With someone like him around, she would never be able to take revenge. After learning that she could become a super scion, she decided to put all her efforts into training. She only had one goal, to become stronger and kill this bastard Frisia before someone else could come ahead of her. She was stuck on the thought of revenge. She had to keep her mind occupied, otherwise she would think about her parents, her brother, her sister. Every night she would think about how they lived together, shared their meals, trained together and quarreled about trivial things. She didn't know how lucky she was until she lost them. She would never be able to fight over food with her siblings or spend time training with her father. She regretted not being able to say how much she loved them. She missed them so much, it teared apart her heart every night. 
she just couldn't handle it. She distracted herself with revenge, so she wouldn't need to deal with this pain. This way she could completely block it out. Not until now. Not until she saw how A's, Taro and Aaliyah were fighting for her sake. That she was so focused on her past that she didn't realize that she was slowly losing her friends around her, who cared for her. I'm sorry, I was stupid. It seems I didn't learn anything from my past. I didn't cherish the ones around me and endangered everyone with my foolishness. She clenched her fist as she said that. But this is why. This is why I can't die here. Not until I redeem myself. Ha! Her weakened golden key flared up again, radiating in the night. Her key was still weak, as she was still burdened by her wounds from the previous battle. But Broly saw that her eyes had changed. Instead of the arrogance or the fear, they were filled with determination. Should have this insight earlier. Broly grinned as he pulled his fist back. He enveloped his hand and thrust it at her, while Kana was throwing both her arms forward, shooting out key blasts at the approaching fist. A huge explosion encompassed both of them. A figure with golden hair fell like a rock through the air to the ground, hitting the ground without slowing down, creating a crater on impact. Her arms were bloody, her ears were ringing, and her sight was hazy. You warg. Suddenly she was hit in the stomach. She could see Broly standing on top of her. His hand had a green hue to it as he grabbed towards her. Whoosh! For two meter tall figures suddenly appeared around him, completely in what seemed to be black armor. They were class ACEs. Broly sensed that that was not all of them. More and more Cs of class B emerged from the surrounding. Their gigantic bodies blocked out the light, casting massive shadows. They stopped moving until they completely surrounded him without leaving a single gap for him to escape. The four class a suddenly rushed forwards, attacking Broly from all sides. Broly easily dodged all of their attacks, only by leaning slightly to his sides. He rushed out of their encirclement and headed towards a 50 meter tall CE and struck out with a punch. On impact, the head of the CE exploded, turning into a tiny bit of black liquid before quickly disappearing. Broly again felt the pure life force he drained from them and looked at the others who have surrounded him. If he could absorb their life force, his would leap up another qualitative level. He started hunting down the weaker class BCEs, quickly killing dozens of them. They could hardly resist Broly in his legendary form. Even their highest class A were no match for him. The CEs seemed to notice this, the class B distanced themselves, watching as the higher ranks battled against Broly. Broly was surprised by their combat power. They weakest of them reached the strength of someone who had a power level of 200 million. A force to be reckoned with even in the vast universe, if he takes what he had seen in the series for a fact. The strongest of them were double as strong as their weakest, but they still couldn't even scratch him. His battle power wasn't a simple 50 times multiplier from his base but a lot higher. The weakest of them appeared behind him and delivered a kick in the back of his head. Without looking, he grabbed and pulled it to the front and stabbed out into the chest with his free hand. He felt the rush of the life force flowing into him, but unlike the lower classes, he couldn't absorb everything. A good part of it flew elsewhere. The other class A didn't stop attacking and bombarded him with attacks. Broly killed his way from the bottom to the top. First, the second weakest died quickly followed by the other two in an unceremonial manner. They were swiftly disposed of in only a few minutes. From time to time they roared but Broly was dissatisfied with their reaction. So he didn't play with them, hence their quick deaths. After killing all the class as the lower class C emerged and charged at him. The class B watched from the backs. Broly frowned as he saw that. It would hardly benefit him to kill them one on one, and it would take too much time as he had to make physical contact to absorb it. So instead of wasting his time with those class CS, he directly dashed towards the class B in the distance. But they didn't have any of it. When they saw him approaching, they fled. Obviously, they couldn't truly escape but waste a few seconds. Broly noticed this as well. They didn't appear to fear death, but only wanted to stall for time. They were waiting for something. As if reading his mind, a blur appeared behind him out of nowhere. He couldn't sense its life force or any other energy leaking out of it. 
He was only able to see it in the corner of his eye, as it clawed at him. Without thinking, he thrust his arm out, slapping the attack from this figure away. The directed shockwave the attack generated destroyed a small hill a few hundred of meters away. Broly rotated around while punching with his other hand at this newcomer. It blocked the attack and was sent flying a few meters before stopping again in the air. Now Broly could take a better look at it. Now seeing him with his eyes, he could again see the immense life force they had in them. Everything was very similar to the Class A CEs except for its face. Instead of the featureless face, a male scion face welcomed him. Its eyes were completely black as well the veins running through it. Boom! An explosion sounded out behind Broly. He looked back to see another of these seas throwing backwards out of the created explosion. A golden comet-like figure shot towards him, positioning behind him. Surprisingly, it was Kana who saved him from the ambush. What do you think you are doing? This pathetic heroic act won't change my attention to kill you. He only glanced at her for a second and let her position herself in his back before watching the sea's movements again. He was not afraid of her. Even if Kana wanted to attack him now, it would still better to ignore her than attack and potentially expose an opening. Besides, even if she doesn't want to, she would distract at least one of those seas away from him. Kana bitterly smiled, but her eyes were still filled with determination. I know, you can kill me after we annihilated those things. At least this way, I can pay back my debt, even if it is only by helping you get rid of them. Humph. <laughs> you think I need the help of a weakling like you? You shouldn't, since they only have the strength of an upper class A, but I saw how you almost get ambushed by them twice, so I thought there might be something wrong with them. They were only able to ambush me because they don't leak any energy. Kana looked at him confused, before speaking. They do. Although, I'm not well versed in sensing. I still feel the tremendous power they give off. While they were talking, another two of these seas with faces appeared and surrounded them. Stop bullshitting me. Why are you even still alive? On K with his scream, the other side started attacking again. Broly confirmed that he couldn't sense any life force or pressure from them. He couldn't even clearly hear them. If he didn't use his eyes to look at the life force of them, he wouldn't even be able to see them. What the hell is going on? He couldn't detect any anomalies with his senses if he spread it out. He could clearly feel the trees, small insects, and the other seas. Only these newcomers were a complete blind spot for him, if it weren't for the fact that he could manipulate the life force in his eyes to see theirs. They have a way to escape my senses. But why only mine? Kana doesn't seem to have that problem. He saw her fight one of those newcomers but was well dominated by it. She was sent flying with a punch, but the sea didn't follow to finish her, instead dashed towards Broly. You are after me. Ha 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 ha. Even without my senses, you trash will always be trash. The four of them quickly rushed at Broly, but instead of attacking directly at him, they circled around him. He abruptly stopped and had a short stare down, before Broly and the four seemed to disappear into thin air. Dull, explosive tones resounded in the area. In the air figures appeared to materialize before clashing with another. The resulting shockwaves dispersed the clouds in the surroundings. Suddenly an explosion filled the air and a black beam of light shot to the earth like a comet, followed by another two beams. Broly with both his hands grabbing onto the arms of his opponent. He quickly forced the two arms to the side and kneaded into the gut, followed by a headbutt. Its head bent backwards, its neck threatened to snap. While the CE tried to lean forward, Broly already emerged above him and grinned at the CE, before punching its head. Not giving it time, he descended with it directly on top of its chest. They created a crater on impact and dust was blown into the air, blocking out the view. He felt that it struggled to get away, but he pinned it with his legs to the ground. He raised his leg before stomping at its head, repeatedly. With every hit, a corresponding crack echoed in the surroundings. After the fourth stomp, the head completely gave in, popping open like an egg. He could feel the pure energy flowing into him. Unlike the almost instantaneous absorption, this time it was greatly slower. On the good side, the corpse didn't disappear immediately, but only slowly faded. Of course, he couldn't sit around and absorb all the energy. 
As the other CEs started moving towards him again, instead of sitting around, he took the corpse and held it under one of his arms. They quickly arrived and without hesitation started to attack Broly, who was standing in the crater. He evaded the attacks from them while running backwards. He couldn't sense them, but he could still sense the surroundings and was easily able to traverse the forest they were now in. He always tried to have his opponents in front of him, for him to see at all times. That way, even with only one arm, he was blocking their attacks with ease. The CEs had seemingly endless stamina, as they continued their relentless pursuit for minutes. They didn't appear to be even slightly disturbed by the chase. Although this transformation is heavily burdening for his body, with his key and life force growing Broly had a vastly greater endurance than others, coupled with absorbing the sea's life force in hand, he could extend this battle for hours if he wanted to. After a while, he finished his absorption and threw himself in the middle of the three seas, letting himself be attacked. Of course, he didn't only let himself hit, but let his senses adapt to this partial blindness. Instead of focusing on the bodies of these creatures themselves, he sensed what changes they made to the surroundings, especially focusing on the air. He quickly was getting the hang of it and through it, he was able to dodge increasingly more attacks. Although after transforming into the legendary Super Scion he could just tank most of their attacks, he wouldn't miss out on training a potential weakness of him. Who knew if he would face similar beings who could evade all of his senses in the future, the universe was vast after all. After dozens of minutes, he was hardly hit anymore, even with his eyes closed. It was frightening how fast he adapted to this new situation. Now after he adapted to this blindness, he only got bored by their weakness. After all, they rarely show any emotions so except for their high power level they didn't have much to offer. Besides, Broly seemed to underestimate the burden this transformation had on his body. Although he could generate life force to heal himself, it offset his increasing ki, but coupled with Super Saiyan his body couldn't take the burden anymore. It was his first transformation after all, only with a bit of training he would be able to stay transformed indefinitely or, so he believed. He stretched out his fingers, covering it with thin ki before he spun around and drew a line around himself. A second later the heads of the three, who pursued him, separated from the bodies and flew into the air in an arc. After killing the three, he quickly gathered the bodies and heads and sat on top of them. While he was absorbing their life force, he undid his transformation. His body completely relaxed, and he already felt that it was recovering. He also felt like a veil that covered his eyes was now pulled off. Now he felt the changes more clearly. He forgot that the transformation not only multiplies one's strength but also the Scion's typical traits to be barbaric and rash, since Kakarot and the others usually seem to have control over it. No wonder he completely lost it. The amplification may be even stronger for him than normal Super Scions. Well, it only amplifies my emotions and has not created new ones, so everything I did is still me. It is nothing training cannot contain, but I still have to acknowledge that this side of me is part of me. As he was contemplating about his fights he just had, he felt three figures approaching him from the side. He looked at them and saw Aaliyah, Taro and A's flying towards him. They seemed to be low on energy and their life force seemed to be drained by a bit. You guys look bad, Broly said, smiling at their getup. Oh, thank goodness. You are back to normal. Taro sighed out in relief, and Aze was visibly relieved as well. You almost killed us. Aaliyah screamed as she waved with her fist. After saying this, a golden figure finally arrived a few dozens of meters away from them. The trio looked at the young girl with golden hair that slightly stood on end. It was baffling the other three as they did not see Kana this way previously as she was almost dead and in her base form. Her eyes though didn't fit her image as they were filled with guilt. Broly squinted as he saw her landing as a super scion. She saw his gaze and undid her transformation. Her hair seemed to lose their strength as it turned to her normal red color before being blown slightly sideways by the wind. I hope you can forgive me. I will do anything to redeem myself. She shouted while kneeling on the ground, surprising the three. No, no, no. It is all right. They were hardly any casualties, since the seas left as well shortly after you guys. Aaliyah waved her hand, trying to move towards Kana to comfort her, but Broly didn't have any of it. You tried to kill me, 
Do you think you get away this easily? Broly growled at the kneeling Kana. A vein bulged as he recalled the earlier scene, where he was beaten up by his subordinate. That was never my intentions. I swear, I was just so angry about... I just needed to vent. I just wanted that you would acknowledge that I was stronger than you. After all, only, only the strongest would be in the right. TCH. What a stupid way to think. Only because you are stronger doesn't make your words true. No human would think that way. Oh my god. Freaking science. Seriously. That doesn't take back that you disobeyed my orders. I am the team leader and my words are law on the battlefield. I now know how foolish I was. Please give me another chance. I will accept any punishment. She cried out, still kneeling. He looked at her kneeling figure before releasing a long sigh. He knew that she was previously so furious because he had taunted her. As for her actions on the battlefield, he couldn't really blame her for trying to help others and lost reasons after she failed. She is not over her family's death. It's best to support her now than to blame her or throw her out of the group. She thought of his friends. And remembering how I beat her up, dozens of times worse than the hits she landed on me. I think a punishment is not really necessary, but... The last two years you have trained and ignored everything else. You have to restudy everything the City Lord had said. I want you to know everything about the enemies and this planet as a whole. Understand? Kana widened her eyes in surprise at the lenient punishment she got. Usually, scions who didn't follow their leaders would be thrown out of the group and be shunned by all or, even worse, directly killed. She looked at Broly, who was now a complete opposite to the monster she fought mere minutes ago. Additionally, after the war, all you guys will be my punching bags in my trainings from here on. Aaliyah, Taro and Aze grinned stupidly after hearing the request. As for Kana, her tears fell down her cheeks as she heard him say that. Although it seemed to be a punishment for the whole group, it was actually beneficial for them to fight someone as strong as him. This meant that Broly was still willing to train and treat her the same as the others. Thank you. She barely got these words out while sobbing. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. You are a scion. Stop freaking crying on the floor and stand up. And you stop grinning. So dumb. We aren't in a freaking kindergarten. Stay alert and let's move out. He already finished the absorption of these CEs and wanted to get to the city and get some rest. He also had a massive amount of new pure life force he needed to digest. Furthermore, he wanted to go back to training, as he felt a bit weirded out by the CEs. He couldn't help but feel a bit of unease, since he was unable to absorb a good percentage of the life force. It seemed the stronger and higher class they were, the harder it would be to absorb its life force and gathered elsewhere. He also didn't get why he could absorb it in the first place. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't absorb other life force than the seas. He wanted to make some tests like killing something and then try to absorb it. He felt that the seas weren't real living beings, which enabled him to control their gathered life force to an extent. So it should be the same if he killed something and absorb it before it dispersed. They quickly arrived in the city and headed straight to the cafeteria to eat. They were currently extremely exhausted and couldn't wait to dive in some food. Surprisingly, for the amount they ate, they didn't take long to finish it all. After they were done, Zinjo came over and looked at the group. Hey, did you already report to the city lord? He wanted to immediately see you after you guys returned. Yeah, we will go after we have digested all the food. Broly said with a satisfied smile while clapping on his bulging stomach. Zinjo raised his eyebrows as he heard Broly's casual tone. He looked at Kana before speaking again. To be honest, after I saw Broly drag you off the battlefield, I thought you would be done for. Seems you guys have reconciled. How sweet of you. Ha ha ha, since Zinjo and Broly have often sparred. They were on good terms with each other and liked to tease each other. Broly's eyebrows twitched as he heard that, before giving him a glance. Zinjo, at the receiving end, felt a chill down his spine. Cough. By the way, did you run into any experts? We only felt a huge amount of key in the distance you headed to. It was so tremendous that even the ground started shaking later on. It was really frightening. Hmm? Yeah, that was Kana and me. You done, guys? Then let's go to the city lord. Broly already stood up and walked to the exit. 
leaving Zinjo baffled standing. Ha 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 ha. Wait, are you serious? Zinjo, see ya. Taro said as he walked past him towards Broly. The others only left some goodbyes before leaving as well. You aren't serious, right? This is impossible, how could you? No, it shouldn't be possible. He shouted after them. But for some reason he knew that Broly wasn't lying. He quickly turned around, running down the hallway before screaming out for his teammates. Guys, we need to step up our training. They entered the city lord's office and quickly saw their master sitting at his desk reading some kind of report. The S fighters reporting. It was the team name Broly chose for his team. Oh, you are back. And in complete numbers, I see. I apologize for the actions of my teammate on the battlefield. I will take full responsibility. Broly stepped forwards as he declared that. Kana was clenching her fists. She wanted to take responsibility for it, but before they went inside, Broly made it clear that he would take it. He said that it was the obligation for the team leader to take responsibility, and since Broly was an important piece in their defense, the punishment wouldn't be that harsh. I think you take it too serious. Since the fight today ended prematurely, Kana's action hardly affected anyone. Of course, there will be punishments, but more importantly, I want to know what happened to you guys. Did you turn into a super scion? Of course, he would take that as his priority. Broly thought and inwardly rolled his eyes. Yes, Kana turned into a super scion. Only her? But I felt that one of the keys was very similar to yours, Broly. Mine is a bit different. I turned into the legendary super scion. Legendary? I thought super scion is the legend? How is it different? The city lord was confused as he heard about the legend. But there was not much he could gather. It was already lost knowledge at this point. Obviously, he would never be as knowledgeable as Broly in terms of super science, since Broly already saw numerous variations and higher levels in the series. Well, not really. Normal super science can be achieved by any scion through training. While achieving the legendary form, you had to be born this way. At this point, the city lord's eyes were practically sparkling. The other four scions in the room were no different, especially Aaliyah, Taro and Aze as they just heard that they could become super scions. Please transform. Wait, I will grab my tools to record and analyze this phenomenon. So exciting. Aaliyah, Taro and Aze were excited because they wanted to see how they transformed. Since they were at least as strong as Kana normally, maybe they could get clues on how to transform as well by seeing it happen. The city lord quickly gathered a three meter tall and wide square box and connected it to some screens which showed the interior of it. He turned around, and his eyes repeatedly switched between Kana and Broly. So? Who is going in first? Broly wryly smiled, before shaking his head. I think I will pass for now. I don't have much control over my emotions and worry that I will go berserk and raise your palace down. Oh, it affects your emotions? He immediately wrote something down in his notepad. After writing, he looked up at Kana. Kana, could you please transform? Of course, if you don't want to, I understand. Then we can just talk about your whole team's punishment instead. So, what do you say? The city lord said with a sly smile on his face. No, no. It would be my pleasure. Kana answered while walking into this box. After she was inside, the city lord pressed a button and the door closed. He entered some commands on his control panel before he pushed a red button. Kana, can you hear me? After receiving a nod as an answer, he continued. All right, you can go all out now. If you feel something going wrong, just tell me. Understood. Broly heard Taro gulp. He looked at the three and saw that they were currently highly focused. He focused back on Kana, but he didn't look at the screens but focused through the box on her life force. Kana started slowly rising her key. Her muscles increased a bit before a golden flame enveloped her. Her hair turned golden as well, and the number for her power level displayed on one of the screens shot up. The box didn't seem to be affected by the energy, but it still leaked the immense pressure, making the other scions take a few steps back. Broly noticed that the displayed number was actually higher than he expected. It should have been 200 million, but the power level displayed was twice as high with 400 million. Well, considering the injuries she got and that she was healed multiple times, 
it is clear that she gained a few Zenkai boosts. There were also a bunch of other numbers which Broly couldn't identify, but he didn't bother with that anymore as he pondered about the way she transformed and compared it with his. He analyzed her life force and observed as much as he could. He saw that most of her S cells were located in her back. Furthermore, he also vaguely feels that she could only release part of her strength. She should be able to unearth more power of her S cells. It should be the reason why Kakarot became a lot stronger after he went into the hyperbolic time chamber and attained Super Saiyan full power. By constantly being in a transformed state, he not only bypassed the waste by transforming, but was also able to use more power of the S cells. The other grades from Vegeta and Trunks just forcibly increased their power output. They didn't use the hidden potential of their S cells. That's why Kakarot was even stronger than the other Super Saiyan grades. A mastered Super Saiyan wouldn't only have a 50 times multiplier, but it should be even higher. Incredible! Your strength increased 50-fold. The city lord already expected a tremendous increase in strength as he felt it from afar, but seeing the data was an entirely different thing for him. Kana, how long can you in this form? In a fight, the maximum should be 10 minutes, it is quite straining on the body. Even if I didn't transform, I could only extend it for a bit. I see. Your key itself changed a bit, it seems something is added to it. So, you can't power up even further, can you? No, I can't increase it any further. I am already at my full power. Please explain how you feel right now. Well, except that my body feels pretty tense. I also feel like my whole body is pumped up with energy. Oozing out. Although it feels exhausting to stay this way, it also feels extremely satisfying. Alright, you can come out and relax a bit. By now, the city lord couldn't be talked to anymore and just wrote into his notebook. Kana was sweating after she came out but couldn't relax for a second as the other three scions were asking her how she transformed in the first place. She explained how she became so angry that she somehow pulled out this energy. She wasn't really good at explaining how she transformed. She only empathized on her anger, which was the key factor for her. By the way, why were you so enraged? Ace threw in after hearing her talking about her anger. She unconsciously looked at Broly, who then started to answer the question for her. Well, I would be pissed as well. Aaliyah squinted her eyes while glaring at Broly, who only shrugged it off. He didn't regret anything he said. All right, I am done for now. So, Kana, can you explain how or rather why you transformed? Before Kana could recount what she said to the others, Broly explained instead. He transformed as well after all. Besides, being able to see life force made the process of transforming clearer to him. Our energies flow from the center of our chest down to the key center of our body, then up the spine and from there to the whole body. Essentially, she and I used anger to unconsciously guide our energies to the middle of the back, which triggers the S cells and from there the energy spread through the whole body. That's why, if you don't focus so much on the anger itself, you should feel a tingly feeling in the back. Oh yes, you already told me about those S cells when you came to me for advices. I originally thought you imagined things, but that they actually exist is fascinating. And the way you described the flow, it seems like the Super Scion transformation uses emotional energy from the middle energy center above your key center. I don't have much information about this center, but I know that it doesn't use key, but an emotional energy. Most races can't use it, but if they can, they get increasingly stronger. I didn't teach you this, since I don't know how to use it. There is also another energy center in the middle of your head. But I got nothing on that either. Broly fell into deep thought. Emotional energy? Wouldn't that mean that we science can harvest this energy and the SLs make use of it, additional to key? That should explain why anger is able to increase a science strength. It is an additional energy source, of course, the Scion would get stronger. Wait, can only S-cells make use of this energy? No. If I am correct, it should be something even Gohan used. In the series he had this power bursts as well even as a child before Super Scion. Maybe it connects to his use of this energy. Wait, doesn't that mean emotions influence the transformation and not the other way around? Then why did I go berserk? First, what I am sure of is that when we transform, our emotions get amplified. Additionally, it is highly possible that we use this emotional energy with our S-cells. Then from our S-cells it spreads through the body, transforming us into super science. 
But if the emotional energy carries intent with it, yes, by using this energy to transform, the intent or rather our emotions will be spread through our body and through the S-cells it will be amplified. This will only heighten the intent we used our transformation for. So, if we transform with rage, we would only become more furious. My transformation seems to have a greater effect on my emotions than for the others, but it should be solvable in the same way. So, if I want to control my rage, I can try to transform by only using Ki or by mastering the Super Scion state and attain mental stability. Essentially acquiring Super Scion full power, Coming to this conclusion, he straight out left and went to his training chamber. He only heard the city lord screaming to take a rest and about their punishment, but Broly just ignored all of it. The other scions were still standing, seemingly pondering as well. Before the city lord woke them up and told them about the punishment, the city came up for them. The city wanted Kana and Broly to fight at the front line. They were required to handle the full brunt of the next wave. Shortly after Aaliyah, Taro and Aze left for their training chamber to pond about the transformation. Kana went to Broly's chamber and went inside. He was already inside and shortly after she came in, he turned on the gravity. Now nobody could enter if he didn't turn it off again. He turned around to see Kana standing near the entrance. What are you doing here? Didn't I tell you that you will be my punching bag only after the war? Yes, but I hoped that I could observe you training. I want to get stronger to be more useful, so I thought I just might ask the strongest person I know. Broly crossed his arms before saying, Didn't I tell you to study as a punishment? Do you want to disobey again? I, I just wanted to get stronger, so I can be more useful to you in the war. Kana lowered her head. How long is the war a month? You won't need a day to learn about our enemies, but years to reach my level. Do you think a month of intense training will make you more useful to me? I am strong enough for them. I don't need you to be strong. I need you to think. Now get the hell out of here. Kana wanted to say something, but she dejectedly went out the chamber after Broly undid the gravity, before turning it back on again. She stood in silence for a minute outside the closed door, before taking a deep breath. Her eyes once again filled with determination as she headed straight for the library. In the chamber, Broly stood still with his eyes closed in the center of the room. His key started to flare up. The ground trembled as whirlwinds were raised by the pressure he gave off. His muscles expanded as he grew over half a meter in height. His pupils have vanished, and he started grunting. An unbelievable pressure could be felt in the room, and it was not the effect of the artificial gravity. He still stood there as if he wanted to power up. The only movement he made was his breathing. On the next day, there were no movements from the seas detected, seemingly not wanting to attack. Only on the upcoming days were activities recorded, as they seemed to hunt down wildlife. This has never happened before. Additionally, the average animals were not strong and shouldn't have huge amount of life force. They also didn't show any kind of indication to attack Elpis. This was the same for the next day and the after that, continuing for several weeks. Broly didn't notice any of this and was still holed up inside the chamber. Only after three weeks, he came out of the chamber and wanted to head to the cafeteria. Kana and Aaliyah were coincidentally coming out of their chamber as well. Broly, you are finally out. I thought you had died in there. Aaliyah exclaimed. My food I stocked up inside, ran out. So I came out to eat. How long was I in there anyway? It is three weeks now. Kana chimed in. Three weeks? That's, that is a lot longer than I expected. Well, you would have informed me if they had attacked. So, I assume no activities for three weeks. There were not no activities, but they attacked wildlife. Kana was informing him about all the recent movements the seas made in great detail. You have done your homework, Broly said as he glanced at her. Yes, sir. Broly just coughed at the exclamation. Although they didn't look that way, he will turn six in a month and Kana is eleven, six years older than him, but she was still a child after all. Being called sir by another child made him pretty awkward as he thought about being a gang leader of a bunch of kids. While they were eating, the others of his little gang came along to eat as well. They talked about their progress and as a surprise for Broly, he was made aware that they had a huge increase in strength if they powered up using their S-cells, 
attaining a semi-super scion state. They didn't have enough S cells to turn into regular super scions, but they weren't far off. Broly knew that the number of S cells corresponds to the spirit and the power level of the scion. A gentler spirit and high power level results in a greater number of S cells, which begs the questions why Kana was already able to turn super scion without problem now, while the others were still struggling, even though they were superior in their base form. Maybe the emotional energy has a greater impact than he thought. Putting this at the back of his mind, the city lord came in and headed straight to their table. Broly, you are finally out. Did you have great results? The city lord seemed to have something more urgent to say. It is all right. Something happened? Yes, there has been some concerning reports. The seas are gathering. So, how big will be the next wave? There won't be another wave they don't just gather. They are fusing. About an hour flight away, we have just noticed that a massive amount of seas are transforming into one being. By the rate they are fusing, it will only take half an hour before they all have become one being. Broly widened his eyes as he heard this and sprung up. Kana, you are coming with me. Master, where are they fusing? I will head there immediately. With high speed, they shot through the air to where the seas were merging together. Kana, already transformed into a super scion, was barely able to keep up with Broly. As she looked at him, she didn't see anything different from him. He looked like he was in his base form but was still faster than her. After two minutes, they were only a hundred kilometers away from their destination. Broly stopped before turning around, looking at Kana. She was shocked as she saw yellow-greenish eyes very similar to the ones back at the Origin Crystal. Though they didn't give off any pressure, it is clearly a sign that he is currently at least on the same level as me, even without turning into his legendary form. What did he do to become this strong in only three weeks? Kana thought as she saw and felt the strength oozing out of Broly. I will say this once. You follow my orders without questions. I don't give a shit about your opinion or feelings. Do as I say. Understood. She gave a quick standard salute. Although it was barely noticeable, her shivers couldn't escape Broly's eyes. You probably didn't notice, but there are countless lower seas. Although they are weak, there are hundreds of thousands of them in hiding. In exactly half a minute you will start attacking, there, with your full might. Gather as much attention as you can without moving further to the merging point. Understood. She responded while glancing at the seemingly empty surroundings. Don't disappoint me again, or there will be no third chance. Broly's eyes seemed to light up as he said that, sending a shiver down Kana's spine. Ununderstood. After she said that, his figure seemed to fade away before vanishing completely. Coming out of her daze, she started her timer. She became nervous as the time ticked down. Seconds passed until finally the timer reached its end, ringing out. Immediately, her key flared up as she shot volleys of key blasts into the direction Broly pointed, where they hid. In less than ten seconds, Broly arrived at the other side and waited for half a minute. He saw the explosions in the distance, gathering the attention from the lower seas. He saw them flock towards Kana's attack. His plan was simple, pressure the seas to attack Kana, so there would be less resistance when he starts attacking. She was by no means weak and would gather considerable attention. Even if it is only for a bit, it should be enough. He still had around half an hour before the merging was complete. Considering the strength of the previous seas, this should be more than enough, he thought while he took a deep breath. The ground started shaking and finally gave in to the pressure Broly emitted. The newly created crater started to expand as a golden greenish flame started enveloping Broly. His size went up by 20 centimeters, becoming 2 meters tall, and his muscles grew. In comparison to his legendary form, this form was considerably thinner. His hair started to take a golden color, while his pupils reappeared with a yellow shine in it. This form looked nearly identical to the normal Super Scion transformation, were it not for the eyes and the green tint in his aura. In the fight against Kana, his body tore apart while transforming. He has literally shed his skin, breaking through new heights and attaining unimaginable power. Were it not for the limited time he would have trained his base form, but since they were in war, he decided to focus in increasing the usefulness of his Super Scion form. 
While he was trying to master his super scion state, he noticed that in full power he was not able to control himself. He was not able to transform himself without the emotional input, so the easiest and fastest solution he came up was to lower the energy output, only letting himself partly transform. If he couldn't refrain from using emotional energy, he just lowered the amount. In the three weeks, he was able to completely retain reason and even unearth more of the S-cell's hidden potential. With mastering the Super Scion form, he quickly grew in power, but his control over his legendary form also became further away. Only after completely mastering this form, he would be able to start mastering his legendary Super Scion state. Not any more distracted with any thoughts, he blazed through the air as he speeded towards the figure merging with other class as. While he was flying towards them, a green sphere encased Broly. Any CE who made contact with this sphere was instantly torn apart before exploding into tiny bits. But the bits didn't fly in random directions, but directly towards Broly as he absorbed their life force. It didn't matter if it was a class D or B, they all died like flies without resistance. Broly's eyes still had a fierce glint in it, but he unconsciously had a smile on his face, making his appearance even more frightening. If someone were able to see him now, they would be scared to death. They would only be able to see a devil slaughtering his way through the masses. Only in seconds, he bulldozed through thousands of seas. In the distance, he could already see many turning around to head his way, before being blasted to oblivion by Kana. In no time he reached the individual who has merging with the seas. As he came closer, he was able to the face more clearly. The face shocked Broly, as it was none other than his father Paragus. Paragus noticed his approach and opened his mouth. Broly, my son, you are coming at a perfect timing to witness my rebirth. Broly squinted as he heard this. Paragus had clearly not become a mindless puppet, but was strangely able to command the seas. How is this possible? He shouldn't have survived without my help. Did he survive through a rift? But why can he control the seas and why is he targeting his fellow scions? These thoughts shot through Broly's mind, but he didn't stop at all. Instead he was increasing in speed and closed their distance in an instance. He sent out a punch with full momentum, Paragus didn't react at all. Maybe because he didn't think his son would attack him or he just couldn't react in time. Paragus' body was blown away like a cannonball blasting through numerous seas, only stopping after he crashed into a mountain a few tens of kilometers away. Suddenly, the mountain exploded, shooting out debris everywhere. A figure started to fly up as a black flame was enveloping it. Although Broly was able to see the life force clearly, like the other seas with faces, he was unable to sense any energy from Paragus, as if he doesn't exist in the first place. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.